Welcome back to episode three. <laughs> this is only episode three. Only episode three of the Improper Podcast. Very special because we have two guests today. Uh, I'll allow you guys to introduce yourselves. Go ahead, Nate. My name is Nate Schmidt. And I am uh, an e-com cowboy from the 70s. And I'm Johnny Noble. It's great to be here. Thanks. What do you guys What do? You guys do? Uh, I make money online, if you didn't know. What's that about? Yeah, no. It's, uh, I can't tell you about it, actually. It's a secret. Um, no, I do e-commerce. Surely you don't post YouTube videos about it. Very similar <laughs> to you. I think people who watch this probably, uh, probably, actually, I don't know. Do they watch it for e-com? I don't really want to talk about that. We decided we weren't going to talk too much about e-com. But well, for people that a don't, background, yeah. just a little bit of background. Yeah, so I do e-commerce. I'm from North Carolina. I'm 23 and got into it a couple years ago and just like, was like, holy shit, you can actually do this. And never really looked back ever since. And now I uh, just start our own brands and you know, I got a partner that we actually your partner in a business too. Correct. Wow, that's kind of weird to think about. Yeah, you introduced me to him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just uh, enjoying life, coming out here, having a good time. Nice. Johnny? Well, I used to be a trial attorney for a long time, and I got really burned out, and I wanted to do something different. So I started a cosmetics company. I launched the first one, Noble Body, in late 2017. And like we just said, I was approached by um, who was a friend of Nate at the time, Scotty. I was uh, introduced to him about a year and a half ago. And we started another company with, um, it's in the cosmetics industry, but it targets the tattoo market. So, um, and both are going, it's obviously a lot of work, but both are going really well. And I, I mean, honestly, man, it's a fucking blast. Like I, uh, every day is an adventure. I just love it. Yeah. That's insane, Johnny. I, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people, I get a lot of comments on my channel where people are like, is it too late to start e-com? No. There you go. Never. <laughs> it's not. Never. Yep. You can go to college for four years, eight years. How many years you go? Well, four years of college and then three years of law school. There you go. Seven and years of college. 20 years of practice um, as a trial attorney, nice. and then I just quit. So you had a whole life, and you still did eco? Uh, correct. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, guys. Yeah, Don't ever ask that question again. Complete metamorphosis. That's pretty inspiring, honestly. Metamorphosis. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, Nate. I want to bring up what we were just talking about in the car. Yeah. Um, podcast talk. Yeah, podcast talk. But there's no, like, good way to, to, <laughs> to bring it in. All right, I'll bring it in. <laughs> so uh, we were talking about it. I just uh, recently met Sebastian's mom, and it's the first time I've met his mom. And um, been talking to her kind of a lot, like more than, more than you would expect. Uh, you know, 23-year-old dude to be talking to a, I don't know how old your mom is. 49. Yeah, 49-year-old woman. And um, one of the things we were talking about was like family and values and work ethic. And Sebastian, your mom's from Romania, correct? Yeah. And we were just kind of talking about how there's just something there. And it was extremely refreshing to hear people talk about that and how basically how motherfuckers don't work hard anymore and everyone wants shit handed to them. And it was very cool. To, uh, to talk to people in real life, because you, you see a lot of shit on social media, and there's just so many shitheads on social media. And then you talk to people in real life, and you realize that, like, oh, there's actually still good people out there. Yeah. yeah. I, would, I would say that there's probably still a ton of good people out there, but it's just, like, social media really probably attracts the shitheads. It magnifies the shitheads. Yeah, and that's why you see so many of them. Yeah. I think that's important, man. I think it's important to be aware of that. The, you know, social media, the regular media, everything is just so magnified, and it's our brain's like not designed to handle that shit. Like it's crazy how much stimulation we're exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis. Johnny, what was what was like the media like when you were 21 or in your early 20s? It was TV news, newspapers, magazines. I mean, the internet just blew everything up. And I'm glad to span both of them because I think my brain is wired differently because I see in my sons, my sons are teenagers, and they've always been exposed to, you know, the internet and this information overload. And we've talked a lot about limiting the amount of information that you take in. Yeah. Like, focus on what you're really interested in. Like, my oldest is really into baseball, and he's also very into history. So we, you know, kind of channel the energy to limit it and don't get lost in 
the nonsense of social media where, you know, everybody's life is perfect and, um, you know, everybody's an alpha bro and everybody's rich and everybody's happy because it's just bullshit. It's mostly bullshit. Yeah. And, you know, you, you channel your energy and you channel, channel your focus into what really interests you. We've actually talked a lot about that this summer, uh, both of my sons, because they're, they're both very intrigued by what you guys do because they're not much younger than you. So Johnny, can you, you want to move the mic a little closer? Yeah, they're, uh, they're, there you go. they're just very into what you guys are doing already because they're sitting through school and they're not happy with a lot of the things they have to do because they feel like it's, it's kind of ridiculous and futile, especially in this day and age of over-politicization of everything and, um, you know, being force-fed kind of a narrative that isn't necessarily reality, you know, as far as what you should be learning, what's going to be good for you going forward. Um, but this world is just so completely different than what it used to be than watching, you know, Dan Rather on the news. I mean, it's it's crazy now. Was was the media like more credible back then? Like when something came out on the news or the newspaper, was it often believed by most people? Like nowadays, there's it's it's such a like it's half half. You know, people are like, oh, fuck the media, it's fucking fake. And then I'd say less half. than that. I feel like most people most people say the media is fake, or the other way around. I don't know if they think it's fake, but I think most people do not generally trust the media. I think it's not credible. Yeah, I, I think there was a day when. You know, I remember the days of, he was older even when I was a kid, Walter Cronkite. I mean, Ra Walter Cronkite was your, you know, your kindly old grandfather or uncle that you knew you can trust, and he was going to give you straight information, and it wasn't going to be bullshit. But I think if you really study the media going, you know, back very far, it was always a tool of manipulation to sway public opinion. It's just the severity of it that has changed. I think it's it's incredible now how you get very little real information from the media. You almost have to go out and search for it yourself. Yeah. Well, isn't most of the media owned by like one one group? It's a very small group of very large companies that own most of the media channels now. Yeah. Should be illegal. So I know Disney. Yeah. Disney owns ABC, I believe. Um, and ESPN. ESPN, and yeah. Yeah, it's a very small group of companies that control all of the information that is publicly disseminated. But because of the internet, I mean, you can get information that is much more raw and truth from many different sources. The problem is there's so many different sources. You know, I, I think I've gotten some of my best information in the last few years from people like Joe Rogan, you know, yeah. and, the sp and the speakers that he has <laughs> on. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, you know, his his podcast, I remember we started listening to it 10. It was right at the beginning, and it was like a crazy MMA guy talking into a microphone, and then it, it just morphed into this, you know, insanely popular, really in-depth investigation of issues. And the guy's not afraid to attack anything. Yeah. I mean, you know, but if you're going to turn on ABC, any, any one of the big networks, you're going to turn that on. All you're going to get is basically a stream of propaganda. Yeah, and just and garbage. I feel like people are over it. Yeah, you have the CNN far left side, and you have the Fox News far right side, and, you know, there's very little beneficial, truthful information that you're going to find in that, I think. I don't even watch any of that. Yeah. I mean, I do it for entertainment purposes sometimes. Um, but I think it's just... It, they're propaganda vehicles to sway public opinion is all they are now. Did you watch the debate last night? I, I watched it um, on YouTube today with my son. Like the replay? We, about half of it, yeah. What did yeah. you think? <laughs> it's wildly entertaining. I mean, <laughs> That's what me I don't care what <laughs> I don't care what side you, you believe in or, or follow, but it, it's, it's wildly entertaining high political comedy at this point. I mean... I don't even know what to think about it. I just thought it was funny. I don't let any of it bother me. I um, I thought it was really entertaining, though. Yeah, it was extremely entertaining, dude. I was, I mean, we were listening to it in the car on the way to meet you for dinner last night, and we were dying laughing, dude. It was so so it's funny. Good. Trump was, just interrupted everyone all thought, the time, like every second, yeah. And talk everyone just kind of reeled in, and everyone was just talking at the same time. It was just such a shit show. It was like two kids fighting in the back of a car. And then Chris Waller was like the mom in the front seat, like, I'm going to raise my voice at y'all. Like, you better shut up. I will up. turn this car around. Yeah. While exactly. I was watching it, I was think I was reminded of a lot of the judges that I've practiced in. I think that something like that needs a moderator, like an actual federal judge that would just put the hammer down and just, you know, who you need, know, or need turn, Joe Rogan. 
<laughs> or yeah, I mean that you know they Trump agreed to do it, but Biden yeah. would not. I understand. I you know who knows, but um, wait, that was a thing. Yeah, yeah. are that. you being for real? Yes. Someone tweeted and was like, they you know Joe Rogan had so and so on the podcast the other day, and he was talking about um you know how Joe should host the debate, like he should host the debate, he should be the moderator, and um. Trump quote tweeted it and was like, and he like the tweet was like, you know, who wants this? And Trump quote tweeted and said, I do. Who the fuck doesn't want that? Yeah, a hundred. I mean, yeah. I think I think they probably get more views. I saw I saw a tweet the other day. It was some article that was like the majority of American voters want to see Joe Rogan moderate a presidential debate. Yeah, which I think would be amazing because, dude, he would. I I don't even know exactly how that would go, and I don't know if he would be necessarily like way way better. Than, uh, than Chris Wallace was well, last night. I don't think Joe Rogan is biased in any way. No, I at think all. I, I mean, I think everyone's biased in some way, but Joe's honest about it. Like in any way that he's biased, that he is aware of at least, he's very open about that. And I think his number one priority is just the truth, man. He really, he's really interested in interested things, and he wants to find out more about them. He doesn't really have too much of an agenda, I don't think. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, th- I think he would get to the issues better, and you know, allow detailed explanation of you know thoughts situations opinions actions um, plans and and just let it flow whereas you know in this moderated debate setting it's it's all very they try to tightly control it and then it just turns into this screaming fest of people that don't like each other I mean it, it you know you get very little real information out of it and it's funny how you know the left is gonna say oh Biden kind of crush Trump, huh? And, you know, the right's going to say, oh, wow, Trump really ate his lunch. I mean, and it's kind of bullshit <laughs> when <laughs> you really, if you really money. watch it and yeah. really assess what actually happened. I it mean, a it's kind of, well, it's a shit show is yeah. what it is. Dude, I will say I was very impressed with Biden. I, you know, from all the clips, man, all the clips of him stutter and not knowing what state he's in. <laughs> all the funny ass clips of him just seeming like a fucking senile old man. It makes I was you wonder. I was impressed. It did. It, it really made me wonder if if that was my echo chamber on Twitter showing me all those clips, and that's not actually what it is. Yeah. Um. Now again, it could be that he had a good night. It could be that he prepared very well. It could be that they injected him with fucking meth and Adderall, yeah, and you know, who, who knows. But um, I was definitely very impressed. I think he he did a, a pretty good job. And I don't know. It, it's hard for me to make you know like try to decide who I thought won that because it it almost just felt like they both just got in the mud and wrestled around and then they fucking just that was it like no one really won you know well if Trump could just not interrupt and just shut the fuck up for a couple minutes it was so funny dude like he could he could funny he had shit to say like he could make Joe Biden look dumb and but he just couldn't stop being a child for like a minute I was definitely like there were multiple times on both sides Trump and Biden that I was like why don't you bring this up like this is a point that you actually can win on and there's just a couple things like that I don't know. I, I'm sure that they're obviously very prepared, and they probably uh, probably bring things up very intentionally and don't bring things up very intentionally. But yeah, I'm gonna open this. Yeah, crack it open, big guy. I'm way ahead of you guys. Are you? I think I might need another one here in a second. I also got the weed pen. We can get a little uh, a little stony. <laughs> oh yeah, let's get it going. Whoa. Jamie. <laughs> Jamie, pull that up. <laughs> Jamie, pull that up. You like that? It sounds. You're such a douche. You just invented <laughs> the lever. Don't make me pull out my... Uh, I have more than you. I have more Amex. The right Amex here. has more than one use. That's all I got to say. As a bottle opener? Oh, yeah. Mm. Boys, cheers. Cheers. Mm, cheers, gentlemen. It's wonderful. To good friends and making a fucking podcast. This is so professional. Look at this shit, man. I know, right? Thanks to Bobby. Thanks to he, fucking he Jamie put all Bobby this together. in the back. <laughs> fucking I did, setting it up. I did not buy any of this. And Bobby doesn't even have a podcast. He's like, he's like, I just want you to film here. Bobby, why'd you set this up if you don't have a podcast? (laughs) That's what you call a good friend. What a friend. Yeah. What a friend. It's a good setup. It really is, man. I'm very impressed. Yeah. And it it just looks really cool, too. Like, if you ever bring a client here and they see you have a podcast room for no fucking reason, like, they'll be like, all right. (laughs) This guy's legit. Yeah. You just gave it a name, too. The Incubator. Did you guys know that these microphones are the exact microphones Joe Rogan has? And that soundboard is the exact soundboard, too. Wow. Nice. That's where we got the idea, where, where he got the idea for all of it. Was Aren't Joe these Rogan. mics really expensive? Yeah. Yeah, they're good. Because I'm not going to lie, not too long ago, I looked up what mic does Joe Rogan use on his podcast, and it was like a grand. Yeah. It's they're like Rode. Shit. Rode something. Right? No, Fur. Oh, really? 
Oh. Yeah, Logan Paul's. So basically, we're uh, guaranteed to have the biggest podcast in the world after this. Well, yeah. I mean, we're definitely going to get suggested on Joe Rogan's videos. Speaking of the podcast, I just uh, I found out the name of the podcast about 10 minutes ago. Mm-hmm. What made you decide to call it the Improper Podcast? Because I... Not not a whole lot, Nate, to be honest. <laughs> but I didn't want it to be a proper podcast. as you can, Like, we're drinking and smoking on it, yeah. and it's pretty improper. And we can cuss, and we can do whatever the fuck we want. Uh, and be ourselves and sometimes it's okay to be improper so fuck it why i don't know like everything i've always done on social media has been very edited and proper and for for reasons to make money and this and that but like the podcast is something different i have never promoted the podcast aside from the video that we just filmed (laughs) that isn't even up yet so i've never promoted it on my channel so it's got 300 subscribers right now but i know people that do watch it are very loyal people Dude, and that's going to be so interesting because I think the people that watch your YouTube videos, they see a certain side of you. And then to see the more unedited raw side of it, like it, you don't have like a persona necessarily, but it's definitely more, it's more clean cut. Yeah. I feel like you don't swear that often in your videos. It's kind of more like. It's not good for the ad revenue. Dude, I have not any problem. I've been swearing like a fucking sailor in my videos and no I haven't gotten flagged once. What is your CPM? Not as high as yours. You know what it is? No, I mean, I looked at it like a few months ago. I don't really okay. look at it very yeah. often. Yeah, I don't know. I, I use light profanity, and that's, like, one of the things on the monetization. That's what I put too, yeah. Yeah, and so I just, whatever. Profanity light. <laughs> yeah, YouTube has a thing where it, light um, profanity. It, it lets you make the, you know, take the checkboxes of, like, what potential bad things this video has in it that yeah. might get it demonetized. And if, oh. if you're accurate with it, according to its algorithm, if, like, you market accurately, then I guess they, you know. They trust you more, They, I they guess. trust I you more, know. maybe, you know, oh. let you... They give you, like, a green check. They're like, yeah, it looks like you're right. And I'm like, yeah, sweet. Yeah, motherfucker, I know I'm right. (laughs) Why would I lie to you, YouTube? (laughs) That's interesting. Did you guys know that the CEO of YouTube, Susan, right? She's a girl. Yeah. Is uh, related to the CEO of Google. Is that a, is that? No, she's, um. Is that cousins? Dude, it's all fucked. It's, it's, it's all fucked. That's, uh, that's like this family. And I want to say she's the CEO of YouTube. I want to say someone else is the CEO of Alphabet or Google. Uh Uh-huh. And then. I think it's her brother, maybe. Don't yeah. quote me on that. That is the CEO of 23andMe. You want to look it up? Yeah, Jamie, look it up. <laughs> 23andMe. So what there's conspiracy it? theories about that. What is it? Yeah, um, because, dude, they have access to all our fucking data. The CEO of, of Google or Alphabet and their relationship. Would you guys do that? Of... Would you, uh, or have you, would you do the, uh, you know, get your genetic makeup done by a site like 23andMe and give I've, your, uh, give your DNA it. to the company? I, uh, I've done it, but I... Restricted it as much as I could. Okay, that's gotcha. the guy, Nate. I don't remember. Sundar. It was a year and a half ago. What? Okay, that's that's he's not that's not him then. Look uh, up maybe um, alphabet, alphabet. Maybe yeah. L- look up Susan like Wojcikowski, um, family CEO or something. Fucking Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, what what would you what would you chicky? I don't even know what the fuck her name is. Four hundred eighty million. Do oh hit um oh that's siblings. Do like family. Family CEO or something, yeah. Uh, might not be it. I don't know. Maybe this is just some fucking... I don't even know if that's what I just said is right, but I think there's something going on there. <laughs> there is something definitely going on. I've there. definitely seen that. Look up 23 Me CEO. Oh, yeah. See, it's... it's. Oh, it's her sister. Okay. Oh, wow. Some other female relative. We're on to something now. We're figuring this out, guys. <laughs> did, did none of these hoes get married and change their last name? They all got the same last name. Nah, bro. Focus on the career. I mean, I guess the uh, Susan, she's she's married. She's married. She didn't change she her didn't name. Didn't change her name. Imagine being a dude and marrying a girl and she didn't change her name. Ooh, that'd be. No, I, that actually, <laughs> I, I really like. I don't think that would bother me like all that much if it if it made sense. If like she was in a profession where cool. like maybe uh, she was a doctor okay. or something and she was already yeah. or a teacher maybe I don't know. If she had like a huge reputation, that w- that okay. wouldn't make my balls shrivel up inside me quite as much as I think it would some <laughs> other people. Well, you never know until you're there. Yeah, that's a, that's a long ways away. <laughs> Johnny, you mind pass me another white claw? No problem. <sighs> Should we talk about conspiracy theories? Yeah, I feel like that's kind of like what I like in this setting. That's exactly what I want to talk about. Yeah, I feel like oh, that's a good vibe right now. Actually, what's the last conspiracy theory that you uh, Ooh. that you looked into? I can tell you mine. It, it was um, three. It was about three days ago. It wasn't long. Okay, it's been a while. I don't so know. This is a conspiracy, first. dude. It's the um, it's fucking Bob Lazar and. Uh, the whole story about him working at 
this place called S4. That was like a, a secret operation or a secret facility uh, near Area 51. Yeah. And he said he saw nine alien spacecraft. And just was, I mean, dude, the, the, the detail that he describes this in is nuts. And like, as far as I can tell, there's been nothing that's discredited his story. And uh, it sounds like there's some motherfucking alien spaceship somewhere in Nevada. And well, it goes we can, And apparently we can fly them. We figured out how to fly them. But uh, well, how the fuck did we get them? Yeah, that's that's un, that's unknown. He said that the information was very compartmentalized, oh. so uh, we need to decompartmentalize the information. Bob, Bob had a or has a background in propulsion. That's why he was chosen yep. to study the You've crafts that? that they had. Yeah, um, and the weirdest thing to me is they they determined that very fast, far distance travel is possible because of the. Um, it's called element 115. It's actually yeah. on the peri- periodic table. Yep. So element 115 supposedly came from one of those ships, and they were able to synthesize it in Moscow. There was a team of Moscow scientists that actually synthesized, and they were able to create element 115 enough to put it on the periodic table. I don't think they've been able, or who, who knows. They, they say that they haven't been able to make it stable. Stable enough to use it. But in that, in that documentary... Um, the FBI raided Bob. So I guess he, he does like um, something with chemicals. He has his own business, I, I believe, um, you know, yes. something science related. And um, he got raided by the FBI. And like he said, it was literally like every single law enforcement agency like, that times. you could think of. And they, I, think, I think this was the most recent time. Yeah. And um, they said that they were just, you know, following up with, you know, some transaction or some customer he had two years ago that did something suspicious or something. But they like literally searched that place like up and down. They said he they literally like put tape on the ground in like one meter squares and like labeled each square to like search literally every square foot of that place. And, um, you know, the guy who made the documentary was asking him was like, Bob, they were looking for 115, weren't they? You snuck some out and they were looking for that 115, weren't, weren't they? And he was like, I can't talk or I don't want to talk about that. And he just would not answer what? any questions who about that at all. Who did the documentary? Which one was it? Dude, is I don't know how I feel about this guy. His name's like, I think it's Jeremy Corbell. Oh, that guy. Something okay. Like that. There was a... He makes great documentaries, but I, yeah. I think he tries to force his opinions on people too much. And it's just like, he's, he's trying to convince you a little bit too hard UF, that it's real. UFOlogist? UF, oh, yeah. What's his name? Uh, Jeremy Corbell? Jeremy, Jeremy Corbell, yeah. There's a Joe Rogan podcast with both of them that's relatively yeah. recent. And the, the crazy thing about that element... Uh, element 115 Mo- they named it moscovium uh-huh. um i don't know based on what i took from that yeah, documentary it's, it's that in the right podcast there. that it wouldn't have existed but for those findings of those you know spacecraft yeah it's hard to say it i mean but there's so much information now on whether or not there are actually aliens here that well didn't the cia literally confirm Yes. That aliens were real. I think it was they the Navy, de- yeah. they declassified. The, the, well, the, they, yeah. they confirmed that there were in fact unidentified flying objects. That they had no idea what the fuck <coughs> they were or how they were doing that. Did you guys see that video of that that white tic tac yeah. spacecraft that's thing? A, that's the yeah. same that shit. would just fucking fly yeah. and then just take off like yeah. into. That was crazy. Um, I watched a video. I think it was by Lemino. Do you know who that is? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He has good fucking videos. He does. Those are very high production value. That was interesting. I couldn't, I couldn't understand. I haven't any seen part that of one. I'll have to watch that. You should watch it. It's like thirty minutes long. He only posts like once every four months, but it's always so good. Yeah, they're like movie quality videos. Yeah, super good. But I couldn't make anything of that video. I had no, I had no idea what to even think. Dude, it, I don't think it's, it's that crazy, far fetched. To be honest with you, like it, that aliens are here or that it, the video. It, it doesn't seem like th- people think that's so crazy. Like, but everyone also thinks that aliens are probably real because the the universe is so big. Like, if everyone thinks that, you know, there's probably, you know, other species of, of creature out there, like, why is that such a big jump? You know, why is that such a big jump that they could have come here? And that, I don't know. I mean, because the thing that confuses me the most is I feel like if they were able to come here, they were probably pretty smart. They have to be very advanced. How the fuck did they just let us have nine spacecraft if <laughs> they didn't want us to have them? What, what, do, you, they, wait, what, wait, if, what do you mean nine? Sp- oh, okay. Nine, okay. Ac- according to Bob Bazaar, there, there are nine of them. And um, my, th- this is my conspiracy theory within a conspiracy theory. Oh. That <laughs> the aliens actually, for some reason, wanted us to find those spacecraft. They placed them there intentionally. Um, maybe as a fucking joke to just see if our fucking monkey brains could figure them out. Like, I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to laugh at us. Did you ever play with ants as a kid? Like on the anthill? Fuck. Just like that, dude. 
Maybe it's just like that. Yeah. What do you mean as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what do you mean? What do you think I did this Doing morning? Last week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Aliens definitely have to exist. But life is incredibly rare. Incredibly we rare. D- I just think we have no concept of like whether it's rare, whether it's not, because we can barely fucking see. Like we, we can see so we could little compared to what's out there. Well, we could still put some, no accurate measurement, but we could still put some sort, get some sort of idea of how unlikely it is to be alive. Because everything in the universe kind of drifts towards entropy, like entropy, like disassociation, like everything, it's not, it's, it goes back to chaos. Nothing is how we're in order right now. Everything kind of breaks down over time. So life mm-hmm. is literally to be alive is to be fighting, is like to be moving uphill. So it, it's, it's it's suffering. In, yeah, it's it's movement. It's 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 really rare. It's super rare. But I think it definitely exists all over the universe. It's just so big that we can't see it. But thanks to the James Webb Telescope, my friends, March of 2021, I think it launches if it doesn't get delayed again. What the fuck is that? The James Webb Telescope. Yeah. So obviously you guys know the Hubble Telescope. Yes. So the James Webb I Telescope. I've heard about <coughs> Hubble Telescope. Yeah. The James Webb Telescope is, I think it, the mirrors are eight times bigger. But it's this this beautiful beautiful telescope that's going to be able to see very very far into the past by looking at light that came from some of the first galaxies that were created after the big bang Mm -hmm. so essentially we're going to get to learn about the big bang and learn about the creation of the universe and it's it's going to open up a lot for us and it's going to it's going to be insane um it has like these gold plates yeah so there it is it's like these gold hexagonal plates and basically when light travels like we're going to look back like 13 billion years. I'll, I'll take a little bit. We're going to we're going to look back like 13 billion years with this telescope right when the universe was created. Uh, and what happens is since space is expanding, the light waves actually get stretched out and they turn they go they shift onto the redder scale. Um, and so this this telescope is going to do what Hubble couldn't do, which is pick up infrared uh, and it's going to be focused on <laughs> infrared, which is going to be these older galaxies and we're just going to get to learn a lot about the beginning of the universe and really understand why we're here. Isn't and there another I don't think we're ever going to figure it out. Isn't there another telescope that they do get infrared from and they combine it with the Hubble? Because I've seen some of it. I think it already, but but it's not as advanced as that James Webb telescope. There could be. I don't know. I've just been learning a lot about this one because it's so hyped up. It's been like 10 years and they spent like $10 billion on it. $10 billion. When's it going online? 2021? March 2021? Oh. Uh, I get delayed because of the good is old COVID. Is that the launch or is that the active date? Launch Dude, launch it's going to take months for it to get. Because uh, there's like these thin layers. There's like five tennis court sizes, five tennis court size of these like t- thin layers of things that's going to um, protect the back of the telescope from all the light so that n- there's no light pollution so that we can really, really look out into like tiny, tiny points of space. Um, and it's just like it's going to take weeks to open up. And if anything goes wrong, we're fucked. Yeah, so it's well, they, they can fix it. Like it, when you look at the history of Hubble, do you guys know the story behind that? Not they, not a lot. They launched the telescope. I forget. It was I believe early '90s, but they launched the telescope, and the mirror was um, had a, a defect in it. Oh, it had that's a right. Flaw in it. Yeah. So basically, they spent I think at least two years. Yeah, was, they had to yeah. send a space shuttle, shuttle mission up. And we talk about e-commerce and how things don't go well sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes things don't work. My supplier totally. is being a bitch. It, yeah, but they sent it up there. They're then fucking in it space. It went online and it was blurry. And then they had to send a space shuttle mission up specifically to fix it. And then it worked perfectly. And, I mean, I think the imagery that that Hubble telescope has gotten is one of the greatest advancements of humanity. It, it, you know, I, I can't think of anything that compares to the information that we get from that. Um, Bobby, is that camera still recording? It is. I I did. Now that you're talking about it, I did remember watching a video about like the little kink, like the mirror was tilted just a little bit. And that's why I wasn't uh, able to get it. It was a flower wave in the lens, in the glass. The glass Mm. was, it it had some sort of defect in it, but they had to fix it because it wasn't working. And um, could you imagine the feeling of the people that worked on that project for a decade or whatever yeah, that sucks. and then you send it up and you shit doesn't work and you shit the bed and it doesn't work <laughs> and then you you have to fight 
that mental battle every single day to figure out how to fix it. And to their credit, I mean, those people pulled it off. I mean, yeah. I, I fucking, couldn't imagine it was fucking that. expensive to launch a rocket back then too. Just well, to fix yeah, it. I mean, you're throwing another billion or two dollars <laughs> on, but before fucking Elon came along, before Elon, Elon, I couldn't wait until we brought him up. Wow. <laughs> It's inevitable, is that bro. This is? Like, we're just going to talk about Joe Rogan and Elon Musk. <laughs> Dude, Joe Rogan, I don't know. Elon Musk is definitely, like, one of the most interesting people in the world. So, how you can think, you not I, talk I feel like him? he's not probably that interesting as a person, but I think that what he's doing is extremely interesting. Because I feel like all he does is just work, man. Like, and he's, I think he's accepted that, that that's, that's what he wants to do. Oh, yeah. And I don't know, man. If I had a purpose of that, you know, of that magnitude, maybe I'd be willing to do that or 80, 120 hour weeks like that motherfucker does. I don't know if it's worth it, man. I don't know. I think Elon probably realizes that he doesn't really have a purpose in the greater scheme of things and he just accepts that and just wants to push humans as far forward as he can. Yeah, maybe. maybe. I mean, I think that is his purpose, man. Like, he, he definitely does have a purpose and that's it. But it just. I, I mean, don't know. he starts a car company as a hobby, like basically. You know, well, wasn't it an existing company and he came into it? Tesla? I think he built I, it from I don't the think ground. so, yeah. I think no, he I think sold he PayPal and used that money to build Tesla. Yeah. Oh, okay, wow. I mean, it's... That's my it's understanding insane. as well. I remember him saying to Joe Rogan, oh, I just wanted to build a really cool car. You know, the way he talks. What That's are you doing slide. this Friday? <laughs> <laughs> just like, I'm going to build a car company. I hate the traffic in LA, so I'm going to build these underground tunnels to alleviate the traffic. That is the coolest. That's my I mean, personal favorite project. You gotta his. give him props to that. Actually, I think that's yeah, the coolest fucking thing, dude. It's pretty amazing. I, there Have should you be seen more people like that. The fucking boring machine, dude. Yeah, it's he, it's, it, it's nuts. I mean, it's absolutely fucking nuts. I haven't seen it. It's fucking. Isn't it? Well, Bobby, can wasn't you it used up? on some other projects? The, the boring company like tunneling machine. Wasn't it used on some of those European tunnels? I have no idea. Um, I thought I remembered that it was. I mean, they. I'm pretty sure they like the the previous technology was like. 10 times less effective than what he built. Like, they, they built a completely new thing. What's what they named the company? Dude, look up a tunnel machine. Tunnel machine? Yeah, yeah. And go to Image and see if you can find a... That's so funny, bro. Look at the fucking header on that. On that, like, their, uh, their header menu. Flamethrower is one of the options. <laughs> <laughs> Products, projects, back, gallery, jobs. Do they, still, they don't still sell that, do they? I thought that was limited. I don't know. The what? It's not actually a flamethrower, apparently. Like it's, not a flame it's, flame it's not a flamethrower. Not a flamethrower. They're badass, though. No, he made a certain amount and sold them. And I'm, su- I'm surprised you didn't get one. He, I feel like that's dude. something that you totally would have bought. <laughs> Bro, I tried to buy the... The Tesla put out these like these this piece of clothing, and it was like sexy, and Tesla was like some weird... like. Uh, lingerie. I was gonna buy it for my girlfriend, but they ran out. They ran out of fucking everything, bro. Dude, where's the machine? Look up. Put machine on the end of that search, Bobby. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah. Is that it? I think that might be it. Yeah. Bro, it would take people yeah, their dude, entire look life. Look at that shit. That's like nuts. This. Like what the fuck? So I I believe that one of the biggest issues before they built that was that it wasn't necessarily digging the tunnel it was getting all the fucking dirt and rock and stone out of the tunnel to make room to continue uh doing it so yeah so i think it does something where it uh it's able to do that in a a very fast way what do you guys think about going to mars do you think that that's like a worthy cause? Do you think that we should be going to Mars? Do you think it's like, I mean, that's think about the amount of fucking energy and manpower that is going into that right now. Do you think that that's a worthy you cause? You think it's a lot of energy and manpower? Just on Elon's side? It's everything that Elon Musk is doing. Everything is pointed at that one goal. Tesla, the only reason Tesla exists is because he wants to go to Mars. Yeah, but that's all helping the Earth right now too. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I, I don't, I, I think our main priority should be making the earth completely renewable and then having this place like a, like we're good here we can survive here but he's not wrong like if an asteroid comes we're fucked we're fucked and you know if we don't start now we're not going to be able to do that in in five years if we when we can detect this asteroid i don't know how long you know how long we'd have but yeah. if if we were able to detect it and it comes towards us and we know we're fucked like we we couldn't or maybe we fucking could we're humans i don't know but that would be a lot harder That'd be a lot harder. And, and you know what? That what, what you just said about an asteroid, I think that type of event happens a lot more frequently than people want to face up to. Um, you think? It's happened yeah. on Earth before. Like well, an extinction level event, though? Yeah, yes. it's happened on Earth before. Watch yeah. the fucking Joe Rogan yeah, podcast. It has, it has happened on Earth, but like, think about the time scale of Earth, dude. 12,000 years. 
That was the last uh, one. That, 12,000 years. Yeah, that's that. not a long time. And I didn't know it was last, I thought it was like, like hundreds of thousands of years at least. 12, yeah, there's a guy years. that went on Joe Rogan that talks about ancient civilizations. He, uh, oh, Graham, Hancock. Graham, yeah, Graham Hancock. Yeah, Graham Hancock. That, that's super interesting. He believed that there were civilizations before us that I were that 100%. as advanced or more advanced, and they were completely wiped out by a fucking asteroid. Yeah, you, you, know, you know how I know that's it. true? I know it's true because I did mushrooms, and the mushrooms <laughs> told me. <laughs> I I'm, I swear to God, dude, when I, when I did shrooms... That was one of the things that just, like, kept replaying in my mind. It was just this fucking huge grand thing that this, like, just knowing feeling. Like, it wasn't like like there was just no way around it. Like, I just knew it in that moment that we were we are, like, the thousandth, a millionth version of fucking life. It's very like, possible. It, it's been going on for fucking ever. A long time. And, yeah. like, we, we think that we're, like, the fucking first ones or some shit. Maybe, we, maybe we on probably Earth, came maybe from fungi. We, we probably came from fungi. Dude, what's that guy's name? Paul Stamets. Is that Stamets. the guy? Yeah, that, the that's, fucking that's mushroom, the mushroom guy. Yeah. yeah, that guy's fucking interesting. Yeah, that guy's really fucking interesting. He's a great talker too, man. Have you ever watched that, Johnny? Yeah, that was one of the most popular Joe Rogan podcasts yeah. with Paul Stamets. You did watch it. That, that guy is. Um, well, what's the term for what he studies? My Fung- fungology, my psychology, or some my shit. Sol- oh. Mycologist or mycologist. I don't know. He's the um, fucking Gra- mushroom guy. Graham Hancock, by the way. Way wrote two books on what you're talking about, Fingerprints of the Gods, and I forget what the second I one I need to was, read those. But he got absolutely vilified in the archaeological history community oh, yeah. because of some of the things he was saying. But now, since then, a lot more information has come out, like the impact that they found, the impact crater that they found in Iceland, um, and all the work that he's done with Randall Carlson on those epic floods that occurred, what you said, 12,000 years ago. I think it was like, between 11,600 and 12,800 years ago called the Younger Dryas Period, which was the end of the last ice age. So the comet fragments or asteroid, whatever it was that hit the Earth, um, caused the end of the ice age and enormous flooding, which raised sea levels dramatically and caused these epic floods that um, they studied one extensively in the Scablands of Washington, like eastern... Well, actually, starting in Idaho over to eastern Washington, they basically documented giant floods that occurred, and that's one only one spot. Um, so it definitely happened, and it was enough of a, an event to basically almost exterminate life on Earth. And mm-hmm. if you look at the narrative of how long humans have been here and advanced, it doesn't make any sense in light of a lot of the things that they're finding right now, like the whole Gobekli Tepe complex yeah. in southern Turkey – you know, they pegged that as 12,000 years ago. And it was intentionally buried, apparently, by people. Wow. So that it was preserved. Dude, fucking humans are they're fucking so, egos, man. They think that they yeah. don't. We, we think that we don't. We just disagree with something because we don't understand it. Or because it hasn't been proven true yet. Or you. Because it, you have a, a belief that you have established. And you don't want to give that up. Like, that's. I feel like that's why, um, well, why, the, why Graham got vilified so badly because the entire all the scientists in the community were like well if what you're saying is true then everything that i've been saying for the last 20 years of my life is a fucking lie and built a career on as a yeah. professor exactly. at and a pe- prestigious people university can't admit that. So, so people's egos and their careers are vested in a certain narrative which is falling apart before our eyes which is really interesting to watch it happen in the educational community because a lot of it just doesn't add up, man. It's like you have some very, very advanced technologies and proof of technologies that are completely unexplained by our mar- modern ability to build things and create things. Like another example is the antique Ethereum mechanism that they found near Crete. They found this mechanism that basically charts all of the star and planet and moon movements down and, and even the wobble of the earth, what is it, every 26,000 years? Like it perfectly tracks it with a series of gears. And supposedly at that time, they didn't even have that sort of metalworking ability. People have replicated it. Look look it up. Antique theory, antique Ethereum mechanism. There's a few How documentaries the fuck do you spell on that. That makes me wonder about the Egyptian pyramids. They were, they were yeah. built in such a precise location. We can't replicate those. That's like, that's we like don't the even know how they were fucking built. No, like, no, no one, like, wh- why? 
I don't know. Like it, the fucking, it's too big. Like we can't do it today. Yeah. We couldn't build those today. I I feel like we could if we really wanted to. Could we? I don't think so. I haven't seen them in person. I don't know how fucking actually big they are. They're fucking big, bro. The, the precision. <laughs> I haven't seen them either. They, but the precision. We, we, we have fucking very, trucks and shit now, dude. We have cranes. We you, have yes, the biggest cranes in the world can't do it. They can't lift these fucking massive rocks. Really? Yeah, that's a fact. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a fact. But um, what's it called? They're, Wait, they're bro, placed bro, in a bro, very bro. precise it. location. I got it. I got it. Okay. At some point. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Actually, what if what if they weren't the pyramids weren't built by putting rocks on top of each other? What if they were built by carving the land? And then they just made everything else flat. Yeah, that's an interesting way to think about that. Well, they're separate pieces of rock. They're separate stones. Yeah. In the the it, when you look at um fuck that destroys like, my theory. <laughs> look at that was the a good theory though. Look at the Sphinx. There is, the Sphinx was carved. At least the base of it, I think most of it was carved out of one piece of stone, and they had to carve around it. And there is clear evidence of what is water erosion in that stone. But the Sahara hasn't had water in six, seven, eight thousand years because the Sahara used to be very wet, and then it became a desert. So it's been a desert for that long. So how did the ero- water erosion get in the base of the Sphinx? And there's another dude on. Uh, Joe Rogan has all these guys on. Um, John Anthony West studied it extensively, and they brought teams of geologists and scientists to study it. And everybody's like, "Yeah, well, that's water erosion." And you know, so the whole narrative of how old that thing is is completely wrong. I mean, if you accept that. So to me, the most interesting thing about all of this is you have all these people with a vested interest in a narrative in you know, college textbooks all over the world and prestigious universities and professors and all these people are totally married to this one narrative and it's absolutely falling apart right before our eyes, which I think is kind of awesome because it's just blowing up. Dude, it is awesome, but at the same time, it's like in a way kind of sad that I feel like there's so much just raw truth about the world and, you know, how we got here, all this kind of shit that we're just really not going to hear about or that it's not really going to be publicly accepted because it's not in the best interest of the people who have the information. Yeah. That that have the vested interest and they just put their blinders on and anybody that wants to um, counter the narrative gets attacked. And, but it's changed. I mean, it's changing a lot of it's because of the internet and a lot of it's because of, you know, a little more information gets out. Somebody looks at it. Somebody starts studying that and just goes off on different like threads. teamwork and now. That's like people can go where people other people are. left off. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. There was this quote. This one guy said, he said in physics, everything that's not proven true is theoretical until it's proven true. And then it's always been true for all eternity. So it's like people won't believe something like some scientists will reject an idea. But if it becomes accepted or if they prove it true, like Einstein, for example, um, then it has been like that forever. So (laughs) shit, I think that's kind of kind of relates to the I think we should like we should be more open like we don't know anything. That's the first thing we should all admit is we're fucking clueless. We don't fucking know anything (laughs) like we just got here. I mean, just knowing that there's other galaxies only happened in 1921 when Edwin Hubble realized that Andromeda wasn't some um, nebula in our galaxy. It was outside of our galaxy. That was 1921. And that was done with old photographic plates and a a telescope. Yeah. And, you know, that's not that long ago. That's 100 years. Wasn't gravity discovered like 200 years ago? Uh, Sir Isaac Newton. Yeah, it's, it's like came it's, it's like 200 years ago, I think. Maybe a 18 more. something, 1820, I don't know. Dude, that actually makes a lot of sense. So like you're talking about how the pyramids, you know, how the fuck were they built? Well, we we're talking about the aliens and that the alien spacecraft, you know, Bob Lazar, he was the propulsion specialist. So that was what he was supposed to be studying and trying to replicate was the propulsion system, which he I think he called it like a a gravity it, it was basically that it was a gravity propulsion system. That the, the way that he described it was, um, you know, everything that we use currently for transportation, it requires you to put something in and then it spits something out the back to make you go forward. You know, it's like yeah. balance forces. A lot of energy going back here makes you go forward. He was saying with this, it, there's nothing that comes out the back. It's nothing like that. He had likened it to if you put a bowling ball on your bed and then you go to the other side of the bed and you press down with your fists, then the bowling ball is going to come down. And it's basically talking about how this fucking gravity propulsion system is able to like just 
basically fucking warp you. Like through. it distorts the fabric of space time. Exactly. Like it, and it, it pushes it, you it, it like forward. Fucking controls gravity. It, har- it uses the power of gravity instead of it's like Star instead Trek of shit. Star like Trek. propelling the actual craft. It's like fucking uh, maybe like pushing it through. Dude, it was super interesting the way that he described this thing, man. Like it had these fucking gravity amplifiers, and then there was this, you know, the source of it, which is where I think the one fifteen was in. Yes, and um, you know, it didn't fly like it. it they, they I, I guess they apparently looked like, according to him, like like fucking typical flying saucers, like you would see in a movie or some shit. Yeah, they were inside it. Yeah, I mean, he described right. in detail what it looked like. Yeah, and um, but the interesting part of that was it didn't fly like a fucking flying saucer, like straight. It like tilted vertically. And then pointed the fucking gravity amplifiers wherever the fuck it wanted to go, and then it just like went like and that. It goes. Yeah, but he said that the the seats were fucking tiny, like they were l- really little little people, little little aliens in there. Interesting. Apparently, they called them the kids. Oh uh, yeah, I remember you said that. Yeah, yeah that that podcast is. Um, I mean, you can have a very open mind. It's it's frightening or disturbing. It's because you it makes you realize how much you don't know. And, oh, yeah. you know, the biggest impediment to learning what's out in space is the distance because we don't have anything even close. We've just gotten out of our solar system with a craft, and that took years and years and years. You know, so to go to the even the closest star is something that would take multiple generations of people until we get some other technology. Maybe. But, you know, you get some technology like that, that opens up the entire universe. As soon as humans can harness gravity... That's when we become another civilization. Move to the next Why aren't level. we fucking working on that with, like, like Elon should be working on that, dude. Because, bro, the presidential debate, man, it's more important. <laughs> Politics are more important, <laughs> Jesus man. Jesus Christ. Why can't we just all fucking put our minds together like I a beehive? I guarantee you there's people working on it. Oh, yeah. There well, has I know to there be. are, because Bob Lazar was fucking one of them. Yeah. But it sounds like it's not that many people. I feel like they should get more people on that. But imagine, and here, once again, you end up in an arms war. It's imagine if, you know, pick a country that maybe isn't the friendliest country gets it first. Yeah, man. Imagine so if China the, gets that shit that's first. That's what the race is. Yeah. You know, and that could be a problem for it's a all, national, all national of humanity. Everybody just needs sure. to fucking take shrooms and understand that none of us are, God, should be I against each other. I was waiting for <laughs> someone to say We're that. We're not against each other, man. We should all fucking work together. What would happen if we could just stop fucking fighting each other and just start working together to do some crazy ass shit? We'll yeah. figure it out one day. I'll be dead, but we'll fucking figure it out, man. Maybe, man. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like uh, I feel like fighting and conquering and domination, it's it's built into the human fucking it, DNA. It right? is, but it's it not is. it's not really um, helping us in our case to grow and expand. Yeah. But that's how we're wired, and that's how it's going to be until there's some sort of an awakening, however well, that occurs. Evolution. Evolution will happen. I think there would be an awakening if everyone just took shrooms. That's what I'm saying. Like, just about, if everyone who was in, like, a decent mental state just did shrooms, <laughs> I think I think the world would instantly. There, I don't think there is anything else that we could do to instantly make the world a better place so dramatically and so fast. Do make you guys, everybody do shrooms. Do you guys know <laughs> my shroom story? I know you guys have both I shrooms. have not heard your shroom story. I've done shrooms once in my life, and it was a terrible experience. Really? Yeah, and I haven't I haven't done them yet because I'm just waiting. Here you go. Um, I had to drive for f- f- on 55 miles. I had to drive while I while was while you were on shrooms. shrooms. Yeah. Why would you do that? <laughs> what kind of a situation were you in? Did someone have a gun to your head? It was, was like, a fucked I need up you situation. To take shrooms bro. and then drive 55 miles, bro. We were driving through mountains. Let me. T- I'll I'll try to shorten it up as quick as I could. It was a school night. It was a Tuesday. How old were you? I was a junior, 17. I was junior, a ju- high school. junior in high school. It was a Tuesday night on a fucking school night. Young ass bull. Yeah. So my girlfriend at the time and my best friend have been really wanting to take shrooms as have I, but I wanted to see what it was like for them so I could gain some courage, right? So I was like, here, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll DD. I'll drive up to Prescott. We'll take the shrooms when we're 30 minutes out of this like beautiful nature meadow forest. You guys will take the shrooms and I'll just like babysit you guys because that's what you're supposed to do anyway. You're supposed to have somebody that's tripping with you and you're supposed to have somebody that's not. Spotter. And it's always supposed to be people that you're really close with. So it was perfect. It was a school night. That was not perfect, but whatever. What, t- what time did you take the shrooms? So they, I'll get there. Um, they, <laughs> on the way there, they, they took the shrooms and they got a little bit high. You know, they got shroom high, but they didn't trip and they wanted to trip. So when we... Are getting fucking tired. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> right in the middle. When, oh. when uh, we got up there, they weren't tripping yet and they wanted to. So they took more, right? They took two grams or two and a half grams and then they took a little bit more. W- w- were you guys just eating them like fucking raw? We put them on a sandwich. 
Yeah. We wouldn't want a sandwich. We would just shoot it up. So anyway, we got there. It was like 637. They took more. What kind of sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> like Wonder Bread, cream cheese, and ham. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not. It was not bad, honestly. But so what happened was is they took it, right? And um, and then I was like, I'm going to take your guys' dose when we were up in Prescott. I'm going to take what you guys originally took so I can get shroom high. Anyway, my girlfriend's driving uh, on the way back home, and she's just, like, looking at the sky. And I look at her, and I know something's off. And she's like, all of the fucking stars are coming my way right now. Oh, my God. And I said, pull the fuck over. <laughs> I was like, pull the fuck over right now. We need to figure this out. I look in the back. My best friend is fucking gone. I can't even communicate. He can't speak English. He's gone. He's tripping so hard. Um, and I was like, I wasn't tripping at this point, but I get in the car and we decided it was a good idea to go to Starbucks. We go to Starbucks. Why my the friend, fuck were you guys driving when you were doing shrooms? Dude, it was just, a, it was a series of unfortunate you events. You were 17 doing shrooms. Teen, it was, it was a series of unfortunate events. Oh, yeah, probably. We, we, some seriously questionable <laughs> Seriously questionable. Bro, we go to, this is the, one of the most memorable parts. We go to, we go to Starbucks and my friend, as soon as we get out of the drive-thru, he opens the door, walks out of the car and throws his drink. And I was like, bro, wh like, why did you do that? And he's like, it was empty. He, he, it was, he didn't even take a sip. It was full, completely full. But I was like, get back in the fucking car, lock the doors. We're going home right now. And obviously, as I started driving home, I just started tripping balls. Dude. And I was like, I was like, look, I, I, I stopped the car and I talked to them. I was like, look, I know we're all tripping right now and it's very hard to communicate. And it's like, this is all first for us, but... We need to get home safe. You're like talking in the meta of like what's going on in the situation. Like <laughs> we're all tripping. Everyone down. I was like, we're all tripping and we need to get home safe. I was like, Antonio, just make sure I'm not swerving. You make sure I don't get too close to cars. And we're just for an How hour and a half. How the fuck is Antonio going to make sure you're not swerving when he just thought his drink was like <laughs> chucked it halfway across the parking lot? Dude, we figured it out somehow. You didn't die. We didn't die. We made it home. We all hugged each other. We laughed about it. And now it's a great story. Dude, being in the car on shrooms is one of the worst things I've ever experienced in my entire life. I've never wanted to get out of a car more than, I mean, anytime yeah. I've done any psychedelic, it's like the car is the absolute worst place to be. Yeah. Let me ask you a couple of questions. <laughs> First, um, <laughs> you know, aside from the 17-year-old poor decision-making, did yeah. you, were you weighing the doses out? Did you have any? We did research on it. And okay. we didn't, we didn't, we, we took an approximate amount. We, we said, okay, we're going to take, this is just the right enough, just the right amount to start tripping. Not too much, not like too much. Like a gram? It was, it was like two grams. Okay. Yeah, yeah like I two feel like two that's two like enough grams. to like feel effects, but not, but not to go crazy. Not fucking make you go down the yeah. fucking, yeah. the whole rabbit that's, hole. I think that's the biggest mistake people make with um, hallucinogenics is, oh yeah, you just take a whole bunch and, you know, and then the next thing you know, you're out of your mind. Yeah. Um, that's how people, I think, have bad experiences. And I think how you go into an experience like that mentally is going to determine the experience that you have usually. It's your first impression on it. Yeah. 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 And if let, let's say you're in a horrible state of mind because you're having all kinds of personal problems and then you decide to take a whole bunch of, you know, LSD or shrooms, you're likely to have a very bad experience. Yeah. Um, Cause I've seen that happen. And um, you know, then there's the great experiences, but you know, it's not something to trifle with, especially for younger people. Cause I've seen, some bad things happen. <laughs> well, I'm waiting for my second time here. I want to be in a very, very good spot mentally and like everywhere in my life, like everything, I want it to be really good so that I could just see what ha what has to happen. But a lot of people take shrooms when they're in a very bad spot or like even yeah. other drugs like that. I was going to say, I don't think you need to be in the best spot mentally currently. I think you need to be at a good spot mentally in relation to what you want to happen when you take shrooms. I don't think it's something that you just do for fun. It's not a recreational oh, thing, in my not. opinion. No, I think, no, no, I think so. if you're going to do it, you should go into it trying to learn something at the very least. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying that you're going to fucking discover who you truly are and it's going to be some magical fucking thing. It is a magical fucking thing, if I'm being honest. But I think you just have to go into it with the right mindset that you just, you know, like you, first of all, I think you have to fucking respect that. Like respect the fucking power of these fucking things that grow out of the ground. It's honestly nuts. But I feel like a lot of people just don't have, you know, they just kind of look at it as a drug instead of like something that is, I feel like it's much more powerful than that. I think it's much more powerful than like, I think LSD is like a drug. Do you think but I think that shrooms is something much more powerful. Do you think that the information that you get from shrooms is external from your mind, like from another source? Or do you think it's, it's always been there, but you haven't had access to it? That's tough to say. I think that. I think you get it from the shrooms. I think the sh I think shrooms are the way to fucking jolt you into that place where you're just like, you fucking 
have no ego. You understand that the world is fucking all one. It's just all the same fucking thing. You, me, that like, we're, it's not you and me. It's like, it's just us. Like we're just all the fucking same thing. Mm-hmm. Everything living is all made of the same shit. And it's all the, fi- like, it's all from the same source, man. Mm-hmm. It's everything is in- interconnected. Yeah, absolutely. And like, when you, when you feel that, man, it's the most beautiful thing I've probably ever experienced. I, I don't like how a lot of people treat it like it's um, in, in, in especially in Western society from what I've seen is a lot of people want to be on kind of a constant party and there's, you know, what's the next occasion to party or celebrate. And if you really look at it, that's not how life is. Life is, you know, life is a lot of struggle. Life is contemplation. If you want to improve yourself, you have to work your body, you have to work your mind. And there's people that view things like, psilocybin or mushrooms as you know dude shrooms party drug and i think it's a lot more than that i mean i think it's it's an informational gateway potentially for humans based on what we've seen time and time again you know there's the stoned ape theory going i love around. that theory i do that yeah, the, really the, more, the more i look into that the more i think like there might be something to that man yeah it, there there might be but you know to to just look at it like it's some sort of uh an escape is I think a mistaken idea when Absolutely. you you should be people should look at it like it's discovering more about the world we live in and discovering more about ourselves and humanity and maybe it's some sort of a gateway that actually gives you information that you don't have access to otherwise. So I mean I agree hundred percent. Based on what I've seen and, and learned. Well, maybe it has something to do with our genetics as well, because there's so much information stored in our genetics that we don't have access to. Oh, what if it, it like fucking unleashes that shit? Bro, I think That's that an interesting way to through meditation, it. I've read a book about this called You Are the Placebo. And if you placebo is so fucking strong, like there have been cases where where doctors would perform surgery on people that had issues with their knees and then where they would not perform surgery and tell the same patients like, okay, we did perform the surgery and they would be just fine. Yeah. Um, and they're not just one case, but hundreds and I couldn't recite them all, but you guys should definitely read that book. If you haven't placebo is fucking crazy. It's and real dude. It's yeah, it is. One, real. No, no, no. It's proven real. Yeah. yeah. 100% real scientifically proven real. Uh, and all this information, uh, and healing ability is stored in our, in our genes and we don't really have like conscious access to it, but what, well, is Fuck, it man? Is it the genes or is it the power of our mind to be able to manifest something? It's it's the combination. Thoughts. So it's the power of the mind to go in to unlock this this stored information in your genetic code. There's so much genetic code inside of you. Yes. Um, See, I don't think it's the mind. I don't think it's the mind. I think it's I think the mind hinders you from being able to access that because the mind is so focused on me, 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 and what do people think of me. And like, oh, fuck, did I just say the wrong thing? And it's just fucking constantly telling you negative shit and making you, you know, feel insecure and self-conscious and all that kind of shit. That's I feel the like, ego. I, I, the, absolutely. The, well, and, that, and, and, that's in your, and that's in your mind, right? Yeah, it's so the mind. I, I, th- I think that it's, it, you got to like, to access that. I think like through meditation and, and other things like that, that's how you do that. It's by, by quieting down your mind and listening to your body. Hmm. Interesting. It's very interesting. Well, Johnny, can you hand me a medulla? Well, Sasha, Maybe can you, can you crack that for me with however the fuck you did that? I've never done that with a with an Amex card. You before. Use the bottle. I don't want oh, to share the Amex. This is uh, called a bottle opener. Yeah, <laughs> see, I don't have my keys. It's I'm old fashioned. It's a recent invention. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm here from out of town. Nate, you're probably onto something, but dude, I really feel like I am. I mean, I'm there, not gonna lie. You, you have man, to. I, I've gone on on a bit of a spiritual journey. There, there is past, a lot uh, more to the mind. Three to six months or so. There is a lot more to the mind, though. The 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 part of the mind that that is cynical and negative is very it's that's the conscious and that's very very small percentage of your mind very it's, small but it takes over everything else it but does. i mean dude because it's it's necessary for you survival you can't stop it yeah you, i dude i think that's actually that's actually a really good point cuz i think that that thing in the back of your mind is meant to keep you alive but in the day and age where we don't really have to worry about survival all that often it it doesn't know what to do so it just fucking I mean, do you, like, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like, the, I would say the voice in the back of your head, if you don't, like, if you're not aware of it, most of the time it says negative shit. Hmm. Would you guys agree with that? Or do you guys think it, it's... there? It's there's definitely different? every person I feel like has this inner judge of themselves. Like, you're almost watching yourself from a different point of view. And you kind of do shit yeah. that you don't agree with. And you're like, why the fuck did you do that? You know? Yeah. So there's definitely, like... It's very complicated, I feel like. Um, but there is a judge inside of you that will shame you. And then there is a, 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 a another part of you that will, will
know, try to shut the, you know, tell the judge to shut the fuck up. Yeah. But that, it, that gets easier with time too. If you work at it physically and mentally, um, controlling the thoughts and the judgment within yourself, because we could be our own harshest critic and we, you yeah. people usually are. I certainly am. Man. Yeah. And if, if you can quiet that and focus, um, and redirect all those thoughts, it gets, it gets better and better. I mean, I've, I think I've reached a point at my age where many times I, I just float and there's no, there's not even a thought going through my head. That's amazing. That must there's be amazing. <laughs> well, I, I've gotten better at it because I've worked at it. And what I have you done to work at it? Um, working out a lot and couple it with meditation and... Um, do you meditate? Yeah. Yeah. yeah regularly. That's yeah. I try awesome. to do it a few minutes every single day um, yeah. at different times. Dude, I've been um, doing it a lot more. Like today, I meditated for 27 minutes. I laid, I laid down in your bed, Seabass. <laughs> It works. <laughs> and I, uh, and it doesn't matter. I mean, people have a lot of people have the image of you know, um, y- you can do it anywhere. You can meditate a- on a yeah. bus. You can meditate, you know, when you're sitting on a park bench. You can meditate, you know, sitting in a chair in your backyard. It's just um, getting that power. Try to get the power over your mind. It's impossible to do it all the time. But when you when you get better at understanding yourself and how your thoughts function you can really kind of get your arms around it and, and understand yourself better and get more control over your thoughts and your focus and your direction. So Johnny, there must have been a point in your life then where that, that judge inside of you, that self critic was speaking loud. Incredibly harsh. Yeah. Do you remember when, when was the worst time for you in your life in that, in that respect? Um, probably late teens, Early twenties, really? yeah. All right, that makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a very volatile time for a young man because you have so much going on. I mean, your prefrontal cortex isn't even fully developed until you're about twenty five. So my mom says that all the time. Yeah, and it's true. And it's like Nate, you're not even making good decisions yet. I started to make much better decisions and have much more focus. Um, I guess I was about a sophomore in high school. Uh, I was kind of fucking up and you know, drinking too much and college stupidity. And then I I realized I didn't, I I had a discussion with myself one day and I realized I didn't want to be a loser. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to accomplish things and create things. And um, I stopped a lot of the behaviors that were impacting the mental state because I think a lot of people end up in a bad mental state because of their habits. They eat shit, you know, they eat horrible food, they drink, the they drink too much. Drinking a little bit is okay, but you, if you drink too much, it's going to really impact Dude, it your... it fucks you up, your, It does fuck you More up. More than, like, it, almost anything else, on, in my it, opinion. It fucks up your gut microbiome. I mean, you're, it, it screws everything up. It screws up your sleep cycle. So hmm. um, I, I think the time when I was harshest on myself was I went to college. I had a couple, a rough year, really got it together, turned it around, got out of college. And then I really started to feel like I came into my own. Um, I took three years off after college. I lived in Atlantic City mostly, did some traveling, um, just kind of did the crazy stuff that I could do because I had virtually no obligations. You know, I lived in Atlantic City on the beach. I worked in casinos. I got great experience, made great friends. And I had this nagging feeling because that was the 80s in Atlantic City. So it was just cocaine and, and booze and casinos and clubs and parties and <laughs> i was watching Sounds all like and I, I did not like cocaine at all and a lot of my friends were doing cocaine all the time and i was just watching them deteriorate you know over the course of just a very short span and i realized i have to get out of here and that's when i decided i was going to go to law school so i i literally moved from living on the beach working four days a week having tons of cash in my pocket to moving into the ghetto in detroit to go to law school and I put myself through law school in three years. Um, and, and it was just a, a fundamentally changing experience in my life that made me realize what I what I can accomplish. That's awesome. And yeah, my first semester, I got a 3.88 grade point average. I was number wow. two in the class. The girl that was number one um, was from cunt. a... She was, well, she got a 4.0. She was from a wealthy family, and she transferred off to University of Michigan, which is one of the top at the time was a top 10 law school. I didn't know you went to law school in Michigan. You know, uh, I was born and raised there, right? Yeah, we had that discussion, yeah. I think, a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I lived in the Cass Corridor, 
when I was in law school because I was too poor to live in the suburbs. Um, my apartment was like two hundred dollars a month. It's <laughs> okay. Wow. We lived in Ypsilanti. My oh, mom. Okay. My mom bought our house for thirty thousand dollars. Oh wow. <laughs> Well, wow. you could buy houses in Detroit. I don't know if you could still do it for a dollar. Did you see that? I did see that, yeah. yeah. Back when it was bankrupt or whatever. What, yeah, a couple of years, few years ago. I'll tell you what, I went back with some friends to um, see the new baseball stadium, which is built right on where my law school used to be. In fact, there was a plaque there somewhere outside center field. And we went to some baseball games. And the downtown area had really bounced back from where the way it was when I was there in um, 88 to 91. Um it was an incredible transformation, and um, I understand that happened in a lot of parts of the city. There's still, still horrible parts because it's Detroit, and a lot of those metro areas are still pretty bad. But um, it was pretty remarkable how much it had improved in relatively short period of well, time. Well, Detroit, there's a lot of money being spent into renovating Detroit in the last That's five what I years. understand. My yeah. dad lives in Livonia, which is close to Detroit, no and he is. said that there's been a lot of improvement. So yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, it is. It is pretty cool. Um, but just back to the original point, it just it made me realize how much control I had over um, my mind and my future and my direction. And um, my mom, to her credit, I was living in Atlantic City and she always told me how smart I was and I, I dismissed it and I didn't believe her. And um, I went home to visit my parents from Atlantic City one yeah. weekend, and I was watch. It was like a Friday, and I was watching Jeopardy on TV, Alex Trebek, and I always liked that show for some reason. And I was getting every question and like everyone, and I was, you know, look how smart I am, Mom. And I looked over, and she was just seething, fucking mad. And she said, "You know what? You really need to do something with your brain. You can't be a waiter loser your entire life." And that really hit me Damn. hard. Mm. Yeah, it was like a fucking dagger. How old were you, Evan? Um, well, I was probably a year and a half out of college having a blast on the beach. Wow. And that's when I started, um, the whole process to get into law school. That's what I just, cause you know, back then it wasn't, I'm not going to be an e-commerce guru. There wasn't even an internet yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I decided I was going to do that. Shucks. I had some friends that had gone to law school, really good friends. And you know, they were just finishing up or halfway through roughly. And, and a friend from high school too. Um, I talked to all those guys and I went through the whole process and, um, you know, I don't practice law anymore because of what I do now, but I really, those experiences and, and what I accomplished as an attorney served me well in the e-commerce space. I'll tell you that the work ethic, the attention to detail, um, everything. So, you yeah. know, well, thanks, it shows. thanks to my mom. Yeah. It shows. With I, th your brand. I, I think it's so cool, man. That like, you're just getting into this at like so many motherfuckers, like, our age are like, it's too late. Like, can it's we not do this? Never too late. And you're over here, dude, just fucking killing it, man. And yeah. I, know, I know, I know that you're not anywhere close to where you want to be, and you no. have such a fucking huge vision. <laughs> but it's so fucking cool, man. It's so fucking cool, and it, it's so cool that like, like this is this is a, this itself, is all a reality. It's all possible. I don't know. Us three here. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a weird thing, you know? Like, yeah, Twitter. It, it, it's it's weird that like, I consider you a friend like I would anyone you know my age. Like, yeah. it, it's not like it's. it's we're completely different ages. You have so much life experience, but we're just all sitting here talking fucking shit about UFOs and fucking whatever shows. the fuck else, man. It's, it's can I see your bottle man. opener, Johnny? Yeah, you sure can. Don't want to scratch the Amex too much. Um, I have a question, Johnny. So the internet was invented in 1999 or something like that? Yeah, it was a little before that. Yeah, I think it was before that. And I remember when phones came out. What was it like dating a girl before all that? Um, do, Okay, can, can, I, can I interrupt real quick after that? Can you please tell me how the fuck you plan shit out? <laughs> Did people, were people just more reliable? Were you like, Hey, we'll meet, we'll meet here at three o'clock tomorrow. And they're like, all right, yeah, I'll be there at three o'clock tomorrow. Like now it's like, are like you're texting someone like 15 minutes before, you know, you're supposed to be like, yo, are, are you going to be here? <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it was definitely simpler. Um, not having a device tethered to you all the time a lot of times I just put it down like I don't you know I, obviously I do a lot of promotion and I do a lot of um I learn a lot from you know things like Twitter and I, I study social media for the ads you know I lo I'm always looking at other Facebook ads I'm always looking at other Instagram posts and ads and influencers <laughs> to better understand it for my businesses um but back to what you said um it was just it was much simpler. I mean, as far as girls 
girls are going to be girls, whether there's a phone or not. Um, but you know, it was, it was just a lot more simple, man. It was, um, you know, if you had a girlfriend, you called her on a fucking rotary phone, you know, like literally a rotary phone. Did Actually, you, I you, don't know. Did you call her <laughs> parent? You called her parents' house, and then her dad would pick up, and then you'd be like, "Hey, can I talk to?" Well, I remember dating this girl, and her dad hated me, and it was like, "Oh man, I hope he doesn't answer." <laughs> like, Eric. Hello, Johnny. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's you. Yeah, um, you know, and then it morphed into the. I remember when the cordless phone came out with the the Nokia know, it had an antenna on it, and it was just like. <laughs> You know, the battery would go dead in it. and um, But, you know, planning things like when you're in high school. My best friend in high school lived. I was in a big geographical school district. It wasn't a huge. It was a great high school for that area in Pennsylvania. and But my best friend lived 25 or 30 miles away. And we... Jesus. We'd coordinate things. Wait, where was this? What state was this in? Uh, northeast Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, up in the hills of Appalachia, just a beautiful place to grow up. And um, I, I feel like people were more reliable. It's, you know, like you have to be somewhere. I, I was working starting when I was probably 10 or 11. I worked on a couple of farms. I worked for my dad's bar. I grew up in a bar, basically. Yeah. Um, people were just more reliable. If they said they were going to be somewhere or if there's a party somewhere or we're going to so-and-so's house, you can bet your life that all your friends are going to be at so-and-so's house. Mm. I mean... You know, now it's like people have, I, I think the devices have skewed the attention span pretty badly. Um, I talk to my sons a lot about that, about don't let it dominate your life. And they, they don't already. They, they throw, they're pretty good about throwing it down. Dude, that's um, so huge, man. That's so huge that you're teaching them that at such a young age. I'm glad you got to meet my boys too. Me and too, man. That was awesome. Yeah, they're, they really, um, they really like what you guys are doing. They're really intrigued by it. And you know, they're really smart kids. That's why I want to expose them to things like what you guys are doing in e-commerce and, and other avenues other than the, you know, go to college and get a job and get married routine right out of Fight Club. But my oldest right now is reading Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Um, he just finished cash advertising. And my youngest is reading um, a book called The Forgotten Soldier, which is about a German soldier that went through the Russian campaign and it's incredibly detailed. I read it years ago, and he, he um, came to me a couple months ago and said, hey, Dad, can you have any cool books? And I said, well, you're into military history. Why don't you check this one out? And he started reading it, and he hasn't put it down. So, you know, it, when I see things like that, it's, it's, it makes me hopeful for the future that there aren't just people lost in their devices. That always bugs me when I see somebody walking down the street. with. Dude, you know, I will say it's those. really bad out here, man. Go it's, to a mall, Nate. I, I don't know if it's the West Coast or if it's all the fucking e-com motherfuckers I've met out here. No, no, no. But, it's, dude, it's bad. it is. Bad. I mean, you used to be a lot worse about it, too. You, you I, Like, one of the first few times I came out here, I was like, damn, this motherfucker's on this phone all the time. You're not like that anymore. No. But, like, dude, I mean, there were times, man. I went out to dinner with both y'all motherfuckers, Bobby, too. And, like, Thaddy and, you know, all these dudes. And everyone would just be, I was just amazed. Like, I was like, everyone's just on their phone. Yeah. And I was just like, what? What's going on? And, dude, that was dead ass. You remember a couple of years ago, I was seriously considering moving out here, like moving out to either California or to Arizona. Yeah, Arizona. And that was one of the biggest things that made me not want to. because no Because, dude, people on the East Coast and the South, they don't they do not do that as much. I mean, there, there's, of course, still people like that. But it's not nearly as prevalent because people just – there's just not as much to fucking – to look at man like i feel like out here everyone's posting on instagram constantly maybe, maybe people doing, on the west you know, coast just care about like their their appearance online more like absolutely they, yeah they're like more, i would i would argue that more people on the west coast are in better shape and they try absolutely to look better and they're they're, they're they i try mean try to be richer definitely and but there's definitely like a it's like status is way more important on the west coast yeah. than it is on the east coast you on mentioned the, on that the east when coast I came there. motherfuckers and, and it depends on where you're at where I'm at in North Carolina, it's it's East Coast, but it's also kind of Southern. So I feel like that, I mean, dude, that's my fucking favorite combination of things, man. Yeah. It's fucking amazing out there. And, you know, it's not, it, there's not as much to do as uh, somewhere out here or, you know, somewhere in California. But it's just so down to earth, man. And motherfuckers are just so, they're straight up with you. And they're fucking super nice and they're super hospitable. And it's just it's so much more relaxed. And I feel like people aren't just trying to fucking try to, to impress you constantly with their sickest new car and like i felt like a huge douche when i got my car like <laughs> when i was out there i was like oh my god like i'm gonna look like such a faggot like 
Can I say that? I'm, I'm staying on the podcast, yeah. Bag it? Yeah. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's maybe, the improper maybe, maybe podcast for ago. a reason. Yeah, it's very improper. Cheers. But I do think that's very interesting. I wonder how that... Why do you guys think that happened? Like, why do you think that there's... I mean, obviously, there's going to be differences culturally between different places. But I do wonder LA, why it brother, happened like that. It all started in L.A. and just fucking radiated yeah. like a virus. It's a vanity Everybody thing. that goes to L.A. is probably fucking narcissist and just wants yeah. to get rich and famous and fucking only cares about themselves. And yeah. like I said earlier, Scottsdale was... A, 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 a Arizona was founded on, on a resort. It was, it was built for people right. that had money to come and relax to get away. Dude, I think Arizona is the superior California. It is for now. That that's yeah. that's kind of how I look at it. Well, California's fucking falling into fucking flames right now. I mean, everybody's Jesus moving Christ. out. They're literally losing population right now as we it's, speak. Dude, it's so shitty, man. I, I don't know who I was talking to about, about this the other day, but I was talking about how shitty it is that California is such a fucking like shitty, shittily run state. Beautiful state. For how beautiful it is. Beautiful and state. Like fucking how amazing the weather it is. The geography. It's just such an incredible fucking place, man. And it's it's such a shame. It's yeah. a good example of how a, a beautiful place can be destroyed politically. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, that's not a popular thing to say, but all you have to do is look around in this country right now and see places that are literally being destroyed, be, and it's because of politics and political ideology. And who knows how far that goes, but um, it's it's pretty ugly in certain places right now, obviously. What do we do, man? How do we get out of this? Um. What's this? Politics. This Politics. fucking this. So, so some people say that, that the move is just to fucking make money and then leave, get out of the country, go somewhere else where you it's know, fucking a lot of more people chill. Doing that. Do you I think know. that's the answer? Uh, I don't like that answer because do, I. Like do you guys want to leave the U.S. at any point, or do you see yourselves living in the U.S. for the rest of your lives? Uh, I I would want to stay here. Yeah. I would want to stay in the U.S. Yeah. I, I would have to travel before I make that decision. I yeah. can tell you. I haven't been to a place outside the U.S. that I'd rather live than than in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure there's a lot of great places, but I was born here, and I don't. Uh, I may end up having a place somewhere at some point. Yeah, but I'll always have. I a think base. that's kind of a move is having a uh, having a place somewhere and having ties in a place where if it, for whatever reason, did get really bad here to the point where you were like, yeah, I actually want to leave, then you yeah, could. And you would have that option. You'd already have it. And you you would have built that up ahead of time. You know. As a as a backup, you know what you got to do, Nate. You got to get places in in favorable locations and turn them into Airbnbs, and then hire locals to take Dude, care. Dude, that's that's. I mean, me and uh, that has been my mom. We're about to throw in on a place in Costa Rica, mm. and then um, they uh, they changed the the COVID travel restrictions and made made it like you had to pay like nine hundred dollars or some ridiculous shit in fees to be able to travel there just to get in to the country. That us, yeah. Wow. So it was something along those lines. I'm I'm not exactly sure what happened, but um. Dude, the place we were looking at was fucking beautiful, man. It was just so secluded. It was right off a beach. It was like this. It was basically like a small retreat where people would go, and they they were like very popular with uh, like yoga, like yoga retreats and mm. uh, spiritual retreats and stuff like that. DMT ret- retreat, maybe, dude. I watch. Oh, yeah, it's legal in Costa Rica. You guys want to hear my theory about DMT? I think that this is a. Uh, you guys are. This is kind of retarded, but it's like, I I, I think it might be real. So. <laughs> You ever heard about people when they die, they say that, you know, they had this flash before their eyes. They saw their entire life, and, you know, it in, in a moment, they just, you know, saw their entire life, right? You've, that's pretty common. Yes. And I've heard some people say that in that, there was, like, an answer <clears throat> to, like, what the fuck we're here for. Or like, just the answer to all the unknown questions that we don't know. Like, it just all made sense, you know? And they say that DMT is released when you die. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, nature made it so that this chemical releases in our brain to fucking tell us what the fuck is up right before we die. We can't figure it out until, like, you're going to have to live your whole life and you're not going to know it, but then when you die, you fucking, you get it, and then you die, and then it's all done. If that's the case, then isn't it all about the fucking psychedelics? Well, maybe over millions of years we've evolved to die in a comforting way. And that's what it is. That's another theory. Is that it's just a comfort system. Or maybe it's an informational gateway. Yeah. To could something be. else. The uh, real shit. Yeah. You guys want to smoke some? <laughs> I right. dude, I don't right know. Now. I don't I, I haven't done DMT and I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm ready for it. I don't think I've done shrooms. One day. I don't yeah. think I've done shrooms enough times. And like I don't think I've met my uh I've only, I mean when I did shrooms, 
I did it. I've only done it once, and I probably did like maybe two and a half. You've only done shrooms once. I've done acid like five, ten times, but oh. never shrooms. Yeah, except for yeah, I just did it like probably three months ago. Oh wow! Yeah, that's awesome. That, that's did crazy. you have a good experience, dude? It was fucking incredible, man. That's awesome. It was fucking incredible. Me and um, it was actually is the first part was kind of similar to your story about shrooms. So we got the shrooms, and then um, it was me and three of my buddies, and we uh, we blended the shrooms up into orange juice. Side note, if you're going to take shrooms, great way to do it. It didn't taste bad at all. Um, okay. So we take the shrooms, and then we all hopped in my car, and I, drew, you know, the plan was we, I was going to drive us out to this lake. You know, it was, like, probably 15 minutes away from my house, and um, we were just going to go fucking trip off the lake. And so we hop in my car. We start driving there. Halfway there, it starts pouring rain, just absolutely <laughs> shitting rain out of nowhere. <laughs> and um, we had just taken the shrooms. We're, like, five minutes away from the lake and it starts hitting us like all of us are like oh shit dude like oh no this is uh this is happening and so it wasn't like super super intense at first and like i was i was you know fine driving us and getting us there it was not not like a big deal at all but as soon as we got there all of us were just like so ready to get out of the car like get that that's why i said being in the car on fucking psychedelics like the worst thing in the entire world so we just all want to get out of the car so bad Trapped. it's pouring down rain and we just didn't give a fuck and we just fucking got out of the car and we just you know got absolutely soaked animals yeah no it was it was extremely <laughs> animalistic and um so we, we all go down to the lake and you know we're walking through the woods and you know we go down there i brought chairs because i was like you know we're gonna want to sit down and you know have chairs <laughs> the shrooms start hitting us one of my buddies is getting sick he's throwing up and then he ended up being fine but um we're just like all wet like letting it hit us and we're just kind of all like walking around like fucking monkeys like we didn't even know what the fuck was going on we're just kind of like walking around next to the fucking next to the lake like pouring down we we're just getting absolutely sucked we didn't know what to do and um it's like you're seeing everything for the first time dead ass it is it's extremely novel like that and um <laughs> it was such a it was such a wild experience um so eventually it really starts hitting us and then Dude, as soon as it started hitting us, we're all like kind of sitting down by the uh, by the lake, and Andy, my buddy Andy, you guys you guys both know Andy, um, he's my roommate. <laughs> he just starts being an absolute retard, and dude, it was fucking pissing me off. I was pissed off not just at him, I was pissed off that anyone was speaking. I thought that anyone talking was like a fucking disgrace. I was like, how could you talk right now? Like, words do not do this justice at all. Like, shut up, dude. We can just fucking, like, communicate with each other just by looking at each other. Like, we don't even need to fucking use words. And um, every time a car would pass by, Andy would go, cars are real. <laughs> and every, like, we, we're, we're looking at it, he's like, cars are real. And we're just like, dude, shut up. Oh, my God. So eventually, dude, I was like, I was so, so I went into this, like, like a little bit of background. I went into this wanting to get something out of it. I was like, I want to find some shit out. I don't know about maybe myself or about what I want to do or, like, some higher answers to shit, whatever. And um, because of that, like, everyone, we're just all, like, being fucking monkeys, like, walking around, like, fucking shirts off, just literally dancing in the rain and shit. And um, after we kind of sat down for a second, I was like, all right, I'm, I need to go off by myself. Like, I need to fucking have, like, I need to talk to this thing, like, figure out what the fuck's going on. Because um, everyone, and anytime anyone would try to talk to me or, like, just say anything, I was like, dude, like, why are you talking? Like, shut up, like, stop. Like, this is amazing. And uh, so, long story short, I ended up going off by myself for, like, most of the trip and um, just had these these revelations, I guess. Like, the one I mentioned earlier about how we are not the first. Like, we're, like, the 10,000th fucking version of life, either on this planet or, you know, in the universe, whatever. Um, the best thing, though, was just how how one I felt with everything, dude. Everything living, like, it was so wild. I would look at a tree. And the tree would be fucking vibrating. It would be moving. It would be, like, swaying. You know, it would be, like... It is vibrating. Right. You could just see it. Exactly. And then I look at a Bud Light can. I saw a Bud Light can, like, someone littered on the ground. And it just looked like a Bud Light can. It didn't... It wasn't fucking moving. It just looked like a regular Bud Light can. But everything that was either the ground, like, the earth, or that was living... It had life. Yeah. It, like, you could see the life in it, yeah. which is fucking spectacular. Well, yeah. we're all composed of particles, and we're all vibrating. I mean, yeah. so everything is a particle or a wave. And, being, and dude, being able to see that and feel that... And just like, dude, I was, I remember sitting there like being like, it's so fucking hilarious. The shit that I like get anxious about and get stressed about. I'm like, why do yeah. I do the shit I do on a daily basis? Like, it's so fucking funny. Like, I, I just thought it was the most hilarious thing. That's funny. You said that, um, back to the 
having control of your thoughts in your mind is, is that's a that's a big issue is is being able to harness that and see that and, and when you can absolutely yeah when you get Thank to that, that when you get to that point um it, it's like you've jumped up a threshold and I think most not not to pigeonhole most people, but just look around in society about the way people behave and what they eat and what they do and what they think is important. I mean, so many people are just lost in, you know, bullshit, it, yeah. and it truly is bullshit. Like you know, arguing with somebody on social media about something <laughs> is is there a more so dumb. futile fucking and getting upset time. about it and, and like getting genuinely, genuinely letting angry. it get to yeah. you. Yeah, like if you're gonna argue for fuck's sake, fuck you know whatever, but. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think I, I've i been through some shit in my life that made me see through a lot of that where um, I can't tell you the last time I watched network news or anything like that. I just don't pay any attention to any of that shit because I, I just know in my heart that it's bullshit. Yeah. But, you know, most people are just lost in in nonsense. They eat processed food. They watch processed entertainment. They get sanitized processed information that they think is news. And um, it's kind of sad. And but but there's a huge segment of people that is waking up to trying to find more meaning about what we are, who we are, why we're here and and what is the purpose of this experiment. Dude, Dude, that's exactly that's exactly like the conclusions that I came to, man. There yeah. was this feeling where, like, I was just like, holy shit, I am one with everything. I didn't give a fuck about Nate Schmidt. I was like, if I died right now, it wouldn't even matter because I'm I'm not even Nate Schmidt. I'm, I'm literally this fucking energy that is just flowing through all of us that we're all made of. Mm. Well, and I wanted nothing more than to spread that feeling to literally everyone. Like, yeah. Was the, it like I, joy? What was it? So, dude, I, don't, I wouldn't describe it as joy, man. It was an intense experience. It was, like, it was extremely intense. Like, it was... I, I wouldn't want to be like that all the time. I'll tell you that. Like it's it's something. It's so much to experience at once. Um, and I, and that's that was the weird thing too. Is I got this feeling that like there were just some fucking ancient beings, way back in the day that they had this fucking awakening, this this you know, enlightenment, this knowledge, and they looked like that all the time. And they decided that it was it was just too much. It was too much for for you know living beings to be able to fucking process and to be able to fucking live with all the time. So they were like, all right. We're going to fucking, you know, like God, maybe, I don't know the fucking whoever made this place, man. And, um, that's like, I got this really strong feeling about that. And then, you know, they just allowed us to be a little bit more dumbed down, but then they fucking put shrooms and they just made them grow so that whenever we want to access it, we can, I, it was so strange how vividly I got that, that feeling. Like it was like, almost like there was no denying it. It was just like a knowing it's extremely weird. It's good that you have that ability to do that self-examination. Uh, and because, um, just to have that ability is going to take you very far. Um, you know, you're you're a very young man. Imagine 20 years from now after, you know, having a lot more life experience and being open to, um, you know, what is what is all of this ab- all of this about while you're accomplishing th- things too and creating things. Like, uh, you know, I, I think the purpose of humanity is to create, and a lot of people have lost that. They just want to be. They're happy being a caged animal, and I was never happy being a caged animal, and that's why I wanted to do other things. Like, you know, quitting the practice of law was a huge decision in my life, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I wanted <coughs> to take my whole being to another level. And, you know, it sounds like bullshit. I have discussions with my friends, and they're like, oh, yeah, whatever. But it, but it's true. I was working, you know, I reached – a nice pinnacle as a trial attorney and I, w- I had the corner office and you know making a bunch of money and I was successful by any metric and I felt like something was missing like I can do more I can offer more I can create more and dude that's so I'm sorry to interrupt you but that's so fucking awesome that you had that feeling and you took action on it because most people take that to the grave I agree man I think it's fucking beautiful what you've well, done and there was a catalyst for it it was getting divorced and you know sitting in a room by myself with know having my kids part of the, my boys part of the time and um I said you know and I I went back into a firm and I wasn't happy I was miserable and I just said I just I'm not doing this anymore I can do it but I don't want to do it I want to do something else and that was basically 2014 when I made that decision so you know six years is what it took for me to get to this point but you know now I see the I see the potential and I've experienced some success in a relatively short period of time. I mean, 
to jump into the cosmetics game was, you know, I was called insane by former colleagues and coworkers, and um, but I just knew I felt it. Like you know how you, I, I just I just felt it, and I was drawn to it. I was drawn to the the botanicals and the natural compounds and how did, they. Did you tell your us. Did you tell your like your coworkers and stuff at, at your law firm about what you were going to do? Like you know, obviously you quit your job there, and um, I you know, did you tell them that you're like you're quitting to start a cosmetics company, or did you kind of keep that to yourself? No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that well defined at that time. Um, I quit the firm I was a partner at because I knew I was going through a divorce and I knew I couldn't Wait, that's be a huge were a partner at that. I forgot about that. Yeah, I was a partner at a firm. I was there at the firm. F- I wasn't a partner for nine years, almost all of it, maybe five to six of it as a partner. And I resigned on good terms. I still communicate with some of my former partners and coworkers. We definitely um, got to get into the story of uh, when you got into that fist fight with that dude from your firm. <laughs> I didn't, we didn't get in a fist fight. We just didn't like <sighs> each other. It Excuse was, me, guys. Uh, dude, yeah. there's, there I'm going to take a piss one sec. I, right. I knew that I wouldn't be able to practice law at the level that you have to going through a divorce. So I resigned from the firm. Wow. So you, so left that's that's why you originally resigned. It wasn't because you were like dead set on starting your own company. Oh no, no. That wasn't even on really? my radar. I screen. didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. And then um and then I got out and I was in a new house um you know right in central Phoenix there. So when you got divorced did uh did you move out and you yeah, left the I house did. that Yeah I left I left the house and my exactly what happened. Um, my parents got divorced too. Yeah, my ex. Um, How does that work? Why? What? I guess. Well, you know, it's more motherly. My you know? yeah, my my ex and I bought it together, and we did a lot of work on it. And the boys grew up there, so I didn't want to pull the boys like blow up right. the whole thing and yeah. sell everything. And and you know, like she still has the house, and it's a great house. It's in a great neighborhood, and she still um, has it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and it's beautiful i mean i was in construction i was really into construction and architecture so the house the house is amazing and and you know that's another part of it is walking away from these things that we think are important and i realized yeah. when i was walking away from all of that um you know like the material things like the the fancy house and all that i i really i started to understand how unimportant it really is to tether yourself to you know a house or a piece of property it just yeah, you know, now I look at it and I feel I feel silly. Like you know, the judgment in me is like, why do you get so attached? Why do we get so attached to things? And um, so I was living in a rental, very close to my ex, so that we, you know, were convenient with the boys in their school yeah. and all that. And um, while during some of those long nights when I was sitting there, it was like, well, what am I going to do now? And I. I've told this story a lot because it ties back to when I was a kid. I had horrible eczema. Really? Yeah, really bad eczema. And I had been studying it, and I had been making my own um, natural oil formulas and experimenting on myself. Like Wait, at what age? Uh, when I had eczema? Yeah, when you were experimenting on yourself. Um, I started – oh, wow, man. I started – I was still married. It was like probably ten years before my divorce. Oh, okay. I was making my own sugar scrubs. I thought you were talking about like you were like like thirteen. No, no, I making s- some. Uh, I, I was practicing some law. tinctures in your bedroom. I started making natural oil formulas, and that's another thing. That industry has come so far as far as what's available to uh, not only cosmetics companies but individuals as far as really high quality natural oils and natural compounds. So I started experimenting, and it always stayed in the back of my mind. And then after my divorce, I got out, and I started working on a couple of formulas, um, starting with sugar scrubs. And I just I just kept doing it. And then I started working on, um, you know, things like face oil formulas and mm-hmm. working with hair oil formulas, uh, using natural oils. That was kind of my thing to start with. And um, I'm branching out from that now, but that's where it all started. Wow. And it started with like, it started out by you solving, trying to solve your own problem. Yeah, me solving my own problem, which I did, and my so, skin's wait, so, never so, been so better. So you had you had eczema, and then you fucking whipped up something in your house, and then you put it on yourself, and then it made your shit go away. Well, it's not that simple. It, it partially, yeah, and and I started realizing how holistic skincare is as far as taking care of. You know your gut microbiome. What well, was it? Diet a lot too. Diet is huge. Um, getting healthy sunshine and exercise and sleep. Yeah. Like it's all 
tied together. And, you know, the mistake a lot of people make is, oh, I'll just slather something on and it's going to fix everything. It doesn't work that way. If your diet sucks yeah. and your sleep schedule sucks and you drink too much, you're you're going to have issues. That's how does it everything too, man. Yeah. And it's it, so, it's it really so funny is. that no one, like no one's talking about that. Well, there's no money in it, you know? Well, no, I ta- no one's I making money off selling you to go fucking go outside for an hour a day and make sure that you get fucking sun on your face. Like, yeah, I mean, no, one, no one's making money off that. COVID's that's been no one talks about fantastic it. because I used to go to a gym and work out in a gym. And um, now I've been working out outside in my backyard by the pool. And I don't know that I'll ever go back to a gym. I think my gym's going to be outside. You know, even when it was 100, 118 degrees, me and my son were out there working out in the sun. Dude, it, it, it sounds so bad. 118 degrees. It sounds so hot, but like it, it's hot it's, as shit. I mean, okay, yeah, don't get me wrong. It's fucking hot as shit. It's hot, but like, dude, I would say 118 degrees here is equivalent to like 98 degrees no. in North Carolina. I don't know about well, because yeah, dude, it's the so fucking humid, impressive. man. Like you're you're fucking sweating bullets, man. You walk outside for two minutes and you're I, sweating. I remember e- even in Pennsylvania, yeah, the humil- humidity is is just tropical. It's it's incredibly oppressive. I lived in Houston for a while. <laughs> Oh, I bet it was brutal there. Yeah, between um, college and law school, I have a really good friend there that I'm still great friends with. Um, he visits me like three times a year here. Um, I spent a lot of time there in hot weather. We did trials together in hot weather, and it was just like, you know, it would be 104 degrees and super humid. I mean, it was the most oppressive heat. Jesus. Yeah, it, it was it was crazy. But this dry heat is definitely different. Um but it's definitely hot as shit. Any, there's no. This is, I, I would agree. This is the hottest, driest summer I remember here since I've been here. Dude, I just can't believe it. I come here and I, I'm here for for two days and my lips start getting chapped. Like my lips never get chapped. I, I got to bring chapstick when I come here. Yeah, it's if you're not used to it, you're going to get dehydrated a lot quicker. Yeah. Skin too, you know, skin, lips everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it really. All right, this is completely unrelated. What what are there restrictions here on uh, what time restaurants are closing? Because I'm gonna need to fucking eat after this, and I think we should go uh, get some fucking steaks or some shit. No, I mean there's stuff that should be open pretty late. Yeah, yeah. As long as like something's open, man. Yeah. What what time is it? It's almost nine. Um, it's a lot of restaurants are gonna be shutting down. Yeah. Yeah. Th- I'm I mean, sure dude, there's something. In North Carolina, it's like, I mean, they can't serve alcohol past eleven. Right now. That's 11? Oh, because of COVID? Yeah, because COVID comes out at night. What is it, usually 2? Yeah. So all, all the all the bars are closed by 11. Um, but a lot of the restaurants are closing really early. A lot of the restaurants are still being fucking weird about it, too. And, like, yeah, either only seating outside or only doing takeout. And I feel like it's starting to normalize here. Yeah. It definitely um, feels a lot more normal here. Than, yeah. Um, like than it, especially in it did. I was just in Seattle before I came here. Dude, shit was wild, man. Motherfuckers were wearing masks, like, on the street, just walking down, walking their dog. I see a lot of that, too. I don't understand It's like you're, you're not anywhere close to anyone. I, I just don't understand it. Pe- people really take that stuff to heart. Like, um, you know, I- I'm always perplexed by somebody riding alone in their car with a mask on. It's like, what? Yeah, I, I feel like with that, though, like, it's like a lot of it's probably just, like, give, give them the benefit of the doubt. They were probably just wearing a mask and forgot they were wearing it and just, like, you know, kept going. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. But no, yeah, they're, they're afraid COVID's going to come in through the AC. Give me, give me the fucking water. <laughs> Shit. Say please, motherfucker. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I guess you got it. Please. All right, there you go. I was about to drink that whole thing. Please, you fucking faggot. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but it's been an interesting ride, just to close it out. Um, so far, I'm not done yet. Okay. I'm far from done. I'm glad. Dude, I can't wait till... You're fucking like 70. We're back here. Probably not here. Back in the stew, though. Oh, yeah. Part Record another podcast. Another part two. Hey, maybe this blows up. You you fucking run the skincare industry. I'm a Dubai oil chic. Sebastian is, you know. <laughs> I'm already famous on yeah. social media. You're already. I yeah, mean, you're, yeah, you, you actually are. <laughs> no, yeah. you, you dead ass are famous. I can't believe if, if this podcast. <laughs> That's completely a joke. If, <laughs> he left. No, no, no. This podcast <laughs> doesn't get at least like 10K views. Like, I'm going to be disappointed because you have way too big of an audience. To, uh, for the people not to be listening. Well, we'll see how it, our video does. And we promoted yeah. it, so hopefully it does. And I'll do some more promotion. I, w- I would like to, but Dude, even if put 500 out, Put people. out a post. Put out a, you ever put out a YouTube post? No. You can do that. Yeah. I get a lot of engagement. I've done it like twice. Maybe I will. I'd recommend Just l- it. like a YouTube text post with... Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you can do it uh, on YouTube. You can put out like a... 
like a text post with you can put a picture or you know i've seen more of those now it's coming yeah. to think of it yeah you can do polls yeah i mean it, it's basically like twitter for youtube i mean i have way more fun doing this i would sacrifice my entire youtube channel if i could yeah i mean this is get way a better. podcast channel going yeah and it's yeah. way easier i mean we can just get drunk and talk shit like that's you know that's the goal yeah right yeah obviously like there's more that goes into it than that fun. but like Ac- that sounds fun, actually. Yeah, it's a pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good way to make a living. Mm-hmm. I think we got to get a Fucking little bit more interesting first, though. Joe Rogan. I, I don't man. feel like I'm. I'm quite interesting enough to. Uh, <laughs> to go oh, to make a living. Oh, just you're interesting. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, bro, think about how young we are. Like, I know. I, I just don't feel like I have enough life experience yet. You know. You have more than uh, than a lot of people at the age of fifty. You yeah yeah that's fair. That's true. I, I have been to Thailand twice, so I'm pretty cultured. <laughs> <laughs> how oh, did you like man. it? Thailand's a very interesting place, man. I think it's it's one of the places that I think everyone should go. Like everyone should do shrooms. Everyone should go to Thailand. At the same time. Maybe I mean the, there's see the, the thing about Thailand is uh, apparently like you can literally get your fucking head chopped off if you get caught with any sort of drugs there. So I you know I think that's, uh, that's that might be a little. You also can't a little not not kosher prostitutes. They got, they got no, you can they they see, see the thing about Thailand is it's very easy to tell which girls you're looking at have dicks and which don't. You want to know how? Please. Strictly off of how hot they are. The girls with dicks are fucking tense. <laughs> wow. I'm dead <laughs> fucking serious. What? That's exactly how you tell. If they look so good that you're like, oh my God, dude. Like, I can't believe Because, sh- okay, in general, girls from Thailand, I would not say are the fucking sexy. Why is that a thing, Nate? I, Why are the hot ones? Why do they have penises? Because well they don't dude I think most of them don't actually even have dicks anymore man it's because the the fucking that's the, that's a Thai fucking thing man they specialize in that they're really good at taking dudes and making them look like <coughs> fucking hot ass girls am I am I am I telling the truth dude I'm telling you that's how you can always tell and I mean you can also tell by the size of their hands and their voice and you know there's other there's other signifying factors as well. So but, um, if it's too good to be true, basically, if she's if she's really hot, she's probably a dude. So that's how you can tell. So if you're just, you know, if you're walking around and you see a girl who just is like a seven, you're probably straight. But if, she, if she looks like a fucking nine or a ten, I wouldn't even risk it. I'm going to stick to my girl. I, I know what she's got. Yeah, and me too. My girl, she's, she's my girl, hot. my girl does not have a dick. I'm OK. You. I'm OK. with. I'm, pr- I'm pretty certain. <laughs> I'm pretty certain. You guys, man. Thailand's very interesting, though, man. There's like it's it's such a tourist spot and it's. I really don't understand it, but it's, like, very safe. I'm not really sure why. You just said that they would chop your head off if you had any drugs. <laughs> <laughs> they have some weird laws. They have some weird laws. You can't fucking say anything negative about the king or whatever the fuck it is there. The um, king? I think it's the king. Huh. I, th- I, think he's the, I think he's a king. I could be wrong about that. Maybe maybe he's a, a prime minister or, or something else. But um, whoever he is, you cannot say anything bad about him. If you say anything bad about him, you could, uh, you could go to jail. So, basically, don't get caught with drugs probably carry a decent amount of Thai bot on you in cash in case you need to bribe the police if you get caught doing something. Because apparently that's the thing. I haven't had to do that personally, but I've heard that that's the smart thing to, you know, to do because it's pretty corrupt there. You could pretty much do that. And um, if she's a 10, Don't she's a dude. <laughs> walk away. There if you go. she's a 10, walk away. It's good advice. Well, boys. Start a travel blog. We've been going for about two hours now, almost. I have to get tattoos. I'm sure right. Johnny has <laughs> some very, very important things to do. You're going to get tattoos tonight. Not tonight, I'm not. No. I rolled this over your waist so I, so I would fucking chill out on it because I, I feel like I've just been fucking... I thought you were being thing. generous, but... Yeah. I am too. What What is that device? That's the That's nicotine from the device. Future? Look at this fucking design, Johnny. It's a pretty cool design. Tell me what you think about that. Uh, I like it. It's clever. Yeah. Captivating, for sure. Refillable, obviously. No, it's not, not actually. It's, <laughs> it's disposable. disposable. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. How long does it last? So it's supposed to be 1,800 puffs. So for me... Two days. No, it's not quite that bad. <laughs> um, I would say it lasts me like four four days or so, maybe oh, five Oh, Jesus. Days. Somewhere wow. between three and five days, I would say. Oh, nicotine. Yeah, dude. I mean, I was I'm spending so much money on nicotine. after your uh, shroom trip. Really? Dude, that Did was you actually, think about that? Yeah. Yeah. That's something I thought about, yeah. I did, see. I didn't. I didn't go into it with that objective, though. I think if I if I went in, like maybe maybe that next time. I've heard stories about people who've done that, and they've just fucking tripped balls and just screamed to themselves for hours. 
I will never consume nicotine again. Just like over and over again. And then they, you know, they fucking it's stop tripping and then they quit cold turkey. Like the Paul Stamen story that he told on Joe Rogan where he convinced himself to stop stuttering. Mm. It was a it was that placebo. Was wild. placebo. It was I'm a bad stutter. You, I, don't think, I don't think that's placebo, bro. I think Dude, that's, that's fucking is. tapping into like, I don't know, man. If you believe a it, deeper, it will happen. A deeper level of consciousness. Placebo. It has to be. Yeah, I guess you could. De- I, I guess that could definitely, you know, be related to it. If sure. you believe it, it will happen. Yeah. In in your genetic code, I don't think it's placebo though. Believing something and then it happening, I don't think it's, it's placebo. In, in your genetic code, you have the ability to not stutter, and if you can access that, and if you believe you can access wow, that, wow, that's kind of cool. You can, and if you can, if you can get there, then you won't stutter. That's placebo. Placebo kind of has a negative kind of like a negative stigma, but yeah, it's, it's it, yeah, beautiful. It does. I, I John, are there any more work clothes in there? You guys say. Um, genetic code. I mean, I think it's more. I would think it's more brain based or something like that. Well, it's in the DNA, bro. It's in the the the, the building blocks of every cell of your body. You could say it's in your bi- your body. You could say it's in your mind. It's the same mm. thing. It's the instructions of who of of the complex person that you've become over literally millions of years of evolution. All of this code is stored in there, not being used because it's not necessary for survival. And frankly, as machines, we need to just focus on that for now until we automated it, and t- until we automate it, which we recently have. And the now DNA can be influenced and altered. We can we can access it, yeah. Yeah, I, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. There's so much we don't understand about what we even are. Dude, yeah. that, that's okay. So that's why, like, an hour and a half ago, I posed the question: like, do you think what Elon's doing, trying to get to Mars, is like a worthy cause? Yes, because I do. While I, I, I think it is a worthy cause, I think what he's doing is good. I think that the much more pertinent cause to be going after is it, not out there, man. It's it's inside us. Like, it's fucking going deeper inside ourselves, not going fucking out there. You know, I don't think we're gonna find many answers to what's going on, uh, where we came from. What the fuck is well, you know why we're here? I don't think we're gonna find that in space. I think I think the only is, place we find that is inside ourselves. What would Elon do if he wasn't doing what he's doing now to go towards that? How would I he think? Start he, I mean, I think there would psychedelics you know. would definitely be involved. Yeah, but nobody. That's the thing though. Is there's no money in psychedelics, bro. People don't care. People reject psychedelics. Well, for now, Elon is finding ways to do shit that we never really thought was possible. So yeah. I I wouldn't doubt his ability to do so if he really wanted to. You're not wrong. But I, I think that's part of it. I think, I mean, dude, I think the knowledge is like, it's just been lost. It's been like, it's been there for fucking ever. Like the real shit, like fucking Buddha. Just all the shit that we pretty much ignore because it's not modern. It's not from modern science. It doesn't have a fucking PhD stamp of approval on it or whatever. I think it goes very unnoticed, and I, I don't think that the answers to life are anywhere but inside of us. I think that's, like, really the the main important thing. And that's, like, that's something that there's a quote from Nikola Tesla. It's something along those lines, like, when science stops studying the external and starts studying the internal is when humans will make real progress. Something along those lines. Now, that's an amazing story, too. Yeah. Nikola Tesla. Here, you talk about that. I'm going to take a piss. <laughs> yeah. Tesla was a fantastic man. Frowned upon. Can you get through? Uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty lean, but I'm not that lean. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this, this is quite the ordeal. All right. Oh, we're doing all sorts of switcheroonies. I get over here. Do you know a lot about Tesla, Johnny? I've read quite a bit, and I, I, I've watched a couple documentaries. I mean, there's some pretty fascinating parts to his story about what he was doing and um, some of the technology he had <laughs> supposedly produced that was um, that was there when he died, that was taken. Mm. Um, you know, crazy shit, like being able to harness energy. Create uh, electricity from, 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 from everything, space. yes, yeah. with the Tesla coil. Yes. You know how he did everything in, like, specific numbers. He said, like, yes. three, six, and nine were the keys to the universe. Yeah. Did you ever, you remember numerology? That was on Twitter, right? That was popular on Twitter. Oh, like yeah. Gary's the numbers guy and, like, are VK. They, are those guys still on there? I don't. I, I don't, don't have Twitter. I might have muted them or something. Because <laughs> it's, I've gotten good at muting shit that's just um, insufferable. Yeah. You know, because I. 
I do connect with a lot. I've made a lot of friends on Twitter. I've connected with a lot of people. I have a lot of customers on Twitter. I really enjoy a lot of it, but a lot of it is just um, kind of annoying. I figured it was kind of toxic. That's why I left Twitter. Oh, did you? Yeah. I was wondering. I, I meant to ask you that because um, you just kind of disappeared. Yeah. So, I, I there like the, the sphere that we were in, people... You mean the e-commerce sphere? Yeah, but not it's it's more than that. It's more broad. It's like e-commerce, but like also woke, but like also alpha. It's like a combination of all these things. Yeah. Um, I feel like these guys uh, just portray this identity that they are not at all. I agree. Like Tate is a good example. Uh, and, you know, it's just like people will try to seem as cool as possible and try to like force reinforce like these ideas down people that are reading it on Twitter, like these ideas that are pretty polarizing. Um, and it's just not true. Like you, you can, it's not beta to change your baby's diapers. Like we don't live in the fucking medieval times, bro. Like you don't, you don't run a Roman empire. Like you can take care of your children. Yeah, that's, that's not beta. That's like, you know, and it, I saw that and I was like, all right, these guys are fucking delusional. Well, man. a lot of people saying that shit don't even have kids. I mean, I've had... They're fucking stupid, I, I had two boys, and I, I changed a bunch of diapers because, you know, I want to be with my boys, and, you know... They're your children, so like you got to take you know, care of them. Let's say your wife has the fucking flu. You're going to go nudge her and say you got to change the baby's diaper? I mean, that stuff gets nonsensical. Yeah, bro. Like, I don't know. I saw, I saw it as a very very like too much and i was like these people are just forcing these these ridiculous ideas down these people's throats and and sometimes they're vulnerable and they like actually get inside their head and i was like i don't yeah. want to i don't want to see any of this shit i don't want to consume any of this shit it's and i wasn't frankly i wasn't making money off of twitter either so i was like this is just a fucking waste of time so yeah. i just left uh, yeah I you missed the heyday you missed the heyday of twitter man <laughs> did i twitter was great Twitter was great. I was there for a little bit. Back, in, back in 2018. Ago, man. Yeah, 2018, man. It was great. I was like, I feel like I was like one of the first people to like teach e -com or like sell anything related to like make well, money online. That's how I found you, man. And you it said was, my uh, name. Yeah, dude. You said my that's, name. And I <laughs> that's such a fucking crazy story, man. Like how, you know, how well we know each other now. Just how we met, man. I fucking, I tweeted like something along the lines of like, it pisses me off seeing guys like, I think I said like Hayden Bowles and uh, Sebastian Georgiou who are younger than me, making more money than me. <laughs> like, I, I use that to drive me or something like super yeah. intense like that. And then I didn't know at the time, but Sebastian followed me. And then he, I think you you commented something or something. You're like, hey. And then uh, I think I like liked the tweet. And then you looked at it. And then you saw that I didn't follow you back. And then you unfollowed me. And then I was like, what the fuck, dude? And then I followed you. And then you followed me back. And then, <laughs> and then somehow we end up on the phone. This is when I was in New Zealand. When, when I, when I, when I had first like made enough money to be able to support myself. And I was like, dude, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fucking fly somewhere. And I was like, where should I fly? <laughs> and so she I went there in the I, winter. I, I, yeah. So I thought about it. It's, this is like May of 2018. I thought about it and I was like, all right, where should I go? I was like, all right, I've ne pretty rarely been outside the country before. I don't think it's smart for me to go to a place that, you know, I don't speak the language or that it would be, you know, not very safe or whatever like that. I was, I was being, you know, pretty smart relatively. And um, New Zealand seemed like the place to go. I was like, all right, they speak English there, so I don't have to worry about the language. It's like very fucking far away, which is exactly what I wanted. I just wanted to fucking go somewhere like super far away. And... Um, yeah, so that's where I went. I booked a flight three days before I left. Oh, wow. Got on the plane, got there, realized that I didn't fucking think about the fact that that was in the Southern Hemisphere. It was May. I got there. It was fucking barely above freezing and raining every single day. It was the most disgusting weather I've ever experienced. Like being there in November. Yeah, our, like our November. pretty much. And I, I think I, I went to the to the southern part of it, too. So it was definitely like on the colder side. And my, my plan, my grand fucking plan was to uh, to fly to Queenstown. That's where I was for uh, the two weeks that I stayed there before I fly back, before I fly, before I flew back. My grand plan was to go to Queenstown, stay there for a little bit, buy a motorcycle and fucking journey up all through New Zealand for like the next six to nine months. Wow. What a that, fucking fantasy, bro. That was my, cool. dude, it was such a great plan until I got there and I realized like, oh fuck, dude, driving a motorcycle on this would be absolutely miserable. This is awful. Yeah, be a disaster. So I stayed, I ended up staying there for two weeks and um, 
it was fun, man. I mean, I had a lot of fun. Queenstown is a great place. It's like, it's very interesting because I, I met almost no New Zealanders there. It's all people from other places. It's, it's Australians, it's Europeans, it's Americans, Canadians. And I, I met a lot of cool people there. And um, How long were you there for? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. So, so, and it was super embarrassing, too, because when I left, I'm telling all my friends, like, yo, I'm peacing out, man. Like, you're probably not going to see me till like, fucking Christmas. Like, I'm gone. <laughs> Ever. And um, so they threw me this going away party. Like, I was fucking, you know, leaving. I was, I was planning on going all away for a long time. They threw me this going away party. All my best friends are there. It wasn't like super huge, but it was like all all the homies, you know, all my all my friends that were girls, and you know, my my girl, my current girlfriend. Um, everyone was there, and everyone thought I was just gonna be gone forever. And they were like, "This was the last time they were gonna see me." They miss you. And so then bad. um, I went for two weeks, and then and then I booked a flight back. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. You're like, hey man. I was like, yo, it, a big back. part, a big part of that too. It wasn't just the weather. It was the fact that it, it was actually a huge learning experience for me because. Leading up to that, one of the big things, you know, when I was, like, trying to make money was, like, I want to make money, and then I want to travel. Like, that was, like, the big idea in my head, man. I want to make money. I want to travel. Like, that's exactly what I want to do. And so I did it, and then I realized, like, when I was in New Zealand, I was I was fucking trying to find coffee shops that had decent Wi-Fi. And it would take me, like, three hours to find a place where I could actually work oh, and, like, actually get shit done. And that was when my business was taking off in the first place, and I wanted nothing more than to put all my time into it. Yeah. And so I realized, like, oh, fuck, if I want to – if I want to put a lot of time into this, like I probably like traveling is not very conducive of that. Wow. That's a problem. So that was kind of how I realized like, shit, I, um, I found something that allowed me to do the thing that I thought I wanted to do. And the thing I thought I wanted to do wasn't actually the thing I wanted to do. It was the thing that allowed me to do the thing I thought I wanted to do that I actually wanted to do. And, uh, yeah. Actually makes sense. That actually made sense. You didn't even have to take shrooms for that. <laughs> you just have to fucking go there. <laughs> that ass dude, it was a great experience, man. It was it was really amazing. I met this dude named Bubba. He was from Mississippi. We got drinks. In New Zealand. He, yeah, I mean everyone there in Queenstown, it was it was a really interesting town because everyone it was like a basically like a, a fucking college town. Like imagine everyone who took a year off college and then went and traveled for a year. Like that's basically what it was. Very much uh it was similar to Whistler, Canada, if you've, if you've ever been there. Whistler. Highly recommend Whistler. Whistler's amazing. I wanna go um, snowboarding there. Yeah, I've heard the, really good things. It's it's something else, dude. Yeah. It really is. Have you you've been there? I've been there twice. Hmm. Yeah, Thailand twice, Whistler twice. I I go places I like multiple Flying times. To Vancouver. Yeah, flying to Vancouver. It's about an hour and a half drive. It's really not bad at all. It's a beautiful fucking drive too. Um, it's amazing part of the country. Fun. So yeah, I, I took the boys to. I was catch, just up there in Ketchikan, north just north of there, not too long ago. Um, yeah. So. Well, boys, any where last, are we going to eat? Any last things you want to say? Yeah, I'm fucking hungry. Where are we going to eat? <laughs> I don't know. You, uh, you said you wanted to get in and out before you left. Oh, fuck. I am leaving tomorrow. I better. Oh, you, is you it not open? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we should. Yeah, bro. Come on. I've had, I've had a burger like every day I've been here, but I'm fucking down. In and out. Yeah. yeah. Last night. <laughs> Dude, that burger was so Hey, Johnny, else. I appreciate that last night, man. Yeah, thank oh, you for that. Last I'm going to get man. you back. I'm going to ninja that you. Was back such a, that was such a fucking slick move, man. Yeah, it was so like we just left. We didn't, no bill, no nothing. I like that. From now on, I'm going to do something. I, I do like that. That yeah. was that was a very, very much a power move. You're like, you're like, hey, let's bail. I'm like, we got to wait for the checks. And you're like, no, no, no. Let's bail. And I was like, who am I with? <laughs> well, I grew up in a bar, like I told you. You just so. know they got your card on file. Or, yeah, that's it. Now that's that, it. I mean, I love going to that place with you, man, because everyone knows you there. And like, yeah, that place is fun. They just uh, like my neighborhood bar. What's what's that dude's name? Uh, the dude the tattoos he's shown us. Mark. Mark. Yeah. Who? Mark. Uh, Mark hooks it up, man. Mark's a good guy. I mean, he's um, he's not your typical dive bar by t- bartender. He's a very high IQ. Like he's into chess. He's super knowledgeable about yeah. music. He's got. <laughs> You know, kind of a checkered past, but just a genuinely nice, very trustworthy guy. Like a really good friend. Um, he, I helped him move a pool table into his house, and now he has periodic pool tournaments because <laughs> nobody could play pool because of COVID. That's the gayest so. thing ever, dude. Let the people fucking play. Oh, bro, we can't get into that. <laughs> no, I was actually really glad that we didn't talk about uh, coronavirus that much because I feel like in oh, in, in the yes. content that I've been watching, I've not as much now. It's kind of like past now, but like for a while there, I was like, just, I don't want to hear about it. Like, I don't want to hear anyone talk about it. Like, just fucking, I just wanted, I just want you to pretend like this didn't happen and we're just fucking living in a normal world. Oh, it happens. And it shows you how quickly we could be 
conditioned into something brand new and disturbing. Like yeah. just shut basically shut shut. Well, that, the that's the conspiracy down. that this was the, this was just the uh, you know the first round. This is the test. This is the the test to see how we react. You know, they say Bill Gates, fucking few days after it, uh, after this all started happening, he was calling it Pandemic One. Like it was just the first one of many. Yeah, I mean, it, and that it, motherfucker's the one making the vaccine. I'm not. I don't. I don't know how into that conspiracy I am. I feel like there's a there's a a bit of a stretch there. I don't know if Bill Gates is some fucking reptile. <laughs> evil mastermind but um it is th- there's a lot of shit that you look at and you're like yeah this really doesn't make sense like i don't know why this it is happening and then sense. you look at to me i mean it's it's kind of all about incentives like you just see how people are incentivized and it's very easy to see what you know kind of actions people are going to take to protect the things that they're incentivized to protect well if you look just look at the numbers of it it's not a pan it doesn't even fit the de- definition of a pandemic uh, yeah some people are dying, but more, I believe more people are dying of many other things, including the flu. And I'd be interested to see how many people die from drunk driving. Can we, can we get that up? How many people die from drunk driving a year? I wonder if more people die from drunk driving than from COVID this year. No question. Oh, CDC came out and said that only 6% or even just car accidents. Death, yeah. Deaths that were, were reported were actually because of COVID. Cause like if somebody had COVID in their blood and they got hit by a bus, they died from COVID on well, paper. Yeah. Or if they were super obese and had fucking like, and they were gonna like fucking severe die. diabetes. And yeah, yeah. I mean, so. dude, that's how the world works, man. Like, it doesn't make it any less sad. And like, like I, I mean, I agree with uh, I agree with what Emperor Trump last night was saying when he said that one death is too many. <laughs> yeah. But, um, the, uh, dude, it's just how the world works, man. If you're, if you're fucking fat, if you have diseases and you get sick, you're more likely to die. <laughs> there you go. It recently passed a million, 6% of that. Wow. Well, and the no, no, CDC no, 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 no. The, the, modified the, that number again and made it even lower. So it wasn't a 94% error. And it's an error, too, when you say something is because of something and then you have to go in and modify it and say, well, it was only 6 fucking percent. Dude, I the mean, CDC is the biggest fraud organization, by I think, any like metric in the entire a government. giant fuck up. And they just slid it down again quietly. They always do it kind of under the radar. And yeah, the, the the media didn't report on that. We saw that on Twitter because we, you know, we follow uh, different sources that push that information out. But the mainstream media definitely did not talk about the uh, the six percent thing. Of course not. No, because you know what that <laughs> that doesn't fucking help them sell, man. No, yeah. It's really, I mean, it, it's really fucked up, man. What's happened? Like, masks, like the man. the internet destroyed the media's business model, and now they've just resorted to the most fucking fear mongering tactics. And it's just, it's so wild to see how. Both sides accuse each other of the exact same thing. And I'm like, what? I just don't understand. I'm like, wait. Everybody's projecting. It's like that fucking Spider-Man meme where they're every, like, it's Spider-Man's pointing at himself. He's like, <laughs> it's, it's just like that. Like, that's that's what the world currently reminds me of. <laughs> that's that's pretty true. Yeah. That you know what I'm talking time. about? You seen that one? Yes, yeah. I have. <laughs> I have seen it. Um, it's been an interesting year. I mean, I, I just tried to make the best out of it and didn't let any of it bother me. It's been I, I think we time. us three have probably done a pretty good job of that because I mean it's been you know I would say not bad certainly for for the e-commerce business not bad as a for whole. Mo- not bad for money for sure not bad for for content for anything on well, YouTube yeah, people for, are watching more content for us but for a lot of people that are you know if you have a brick and mortar business or a restaurant you so you sad man de- devastated you know, that's what sucks about it I mean I saw a stat last week I was I was talking to my son and it was like 80 to 90% of bars and restaurants in New York City couldn't make rent yeah. because they just, New York those, are bad. Cash, those are cash heavy businesses. And if yeah. you don't have all your customers yeah, coming in, you're just not going to be able to pay the bills. And, you know, that's devastating on an economy o- over a long period of time. And we're just seeing the beginning of it. Yeah. And I mean, it's frustrating because it's, People should be able to make their own risk decisions. Like if you're scared of COVID, you think you, you stay in your house. I mean, it's not a pandemic. We know it's not a pandemic. Now, yeah. We, d- we should, know that now. It should have been reopened. You know, n- there's just been a battle right here in Scottsdale. The mayor, uh, the mayor of Scottsdale rescinded the mask mandate in Scottsdale, but it's still in existence in Maricopa County, and Scottsdale's in Maricopa really? County. Damn, the mayor of Scottsdale so, is yeah. fucking based. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, well, he got a lot of shit for it. And I'm sure. I mean, I don't know. I, I think that's kind of a dumb, that's a dumb fight. That's a dumb battle. Like, 
it's it's not hard to wear masks. I'm not again like I, I think that yeah. you know it's not really that big of a deal. I don't like the you know the government telling me what to do, but the way that I was originally looking at it is like, dude, it's just a it's it's just like the fucking courteous thing to do for your community. Like I I have no problem with that. Yeah. If if the thing I do have a problem with a is fucking keeping schools closed, keeping restaurants closed, and just all the all the fucking hysteria that has been going on about something that you know, kills way less people than so many other things that we just don't, you know, we, we don't even fucking worry about them. Life, you know, life w- is risk. Cars kill way more people, but we're not going to ban cars. No, li- life is risk. Everything is risk. There's risk in putting food in your mouth and, you know, whether it's choking or food poisoning and, and everything involves some element of risk. Absolutely. And, you know, to, to shut everything down because we have this, are we going to do this every single time now? I mean... It's, are, it seems like it's looking that way, man. It, it, it is looking that way. And I mean, it, you know, you want to talk about conspiracy theories. Is it some sort of a conditioning exercise to get people ready or prepared or conditioned for something else that's worse? What do you think that thing would be if that was the case? I mean, I, I don't even know. Like, I, you know, with this pandemic shit and viruses, now we know it was created in the lab, I think, pretty Exclusively, we know it was. Yeah, it was hundred percent. I mean, dude, Twitter, Twitter, and Facebook banned the lady that that wrote the fucking paper with like undeniable proof that it was made in the lab. Yeah, that, that is just like that's fucking you know that that's like a guarantee to me it's that like that's that's fucking truth. real. Like if it's the it, truth, dude. I mean, m- my mom's a doctor, and she told me that that was published in like one of the most reputable you know medical journals that she pays a lot of money to be subscribed to. Yeah, and then she posted on Twitter, and then they ban her. I mean, there's a point you get to where life isn't worth living if you are constantly under some sort of, mar- and, and it is a species of martial law. There's no way to cut it. It's like you can't live your, in a lot of places, you couldn't leave your house for a long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And except, you know, essentials. I mean, that was kind of a an unsettling time. I've never seen anything like it where they just shut you down. And, you know, is there something worse planned or? On the horizon, I don't know. I think so. I think that um, I don't know. Not fun. I, I'm my my favorite and most likely conspiracy theory about the coronavirus is that China did this intentionally to cripple the economies of basically you know the United States and a lot of other nations. Well, we get most of our PPE equipment from China, so maybe well, dude, they, they, maybe I don't, they I don't, I don't know if it, when, you, when you when dude when I was involved, I so you know I was involved in the PPE game for a little bit. Yeah, and uh, you know myself in the back i closed i closed one deal so one of the big problems that we had with getting it shipped from china because it was being made in china was the chinese government wasn't letting people ship large amounts of ppe to the u.s they were preventing it we had to ship it in very small batches well, maybe that's because they wanted to do it themselves ppe they wanted to keep it for themselves pp personal protective equipment masks oh, basically like, uh, yeah like masks and you, you know this is actually this is that ass do i have it the supply chains were disrupted horribly for... Um, well, China makes most of that these shit. These little motherfuckers, you know? Yeah. Dispensers, the bottles, because of uh, hand sanitizer. Like, I couldn't get pump dispensers for a while for cosmetics. Um, we were almost shut down. In fact, uh, they're still hard to get. I bet. Uh, we're making a, a big batch of Sleek Ink next week, and I still don't have the pump dispensers. <laughs> when are they like supposed to be coming in? I'm short about... 7,000 of them. Um, I'll have to talk to Scotty. <laughs> like next week or the week after, I think. We're probably just going to make it. But all that stuff is out. So I, I talked to our the Chinese dude that I thought that the sourcing of that, he didn't do it. Scotty figured it out some, some other way. Oh, he might have found somebody else. I don't know. I've never talked to any of them. Hmm. Um, but I, we have suppliers here in the States, and they're all sold out for oh, yeah. a long time. Uh, they're saying... My supplier says I can get pump dispensers in December, which is way too late for us. I mean, we're we're dead. We're shut down. That means we don't have any product. Yeah. Um, and then Scotty f- had a contact that he went directly to China for. So hopefully there'll, there'll be some ways around it, but we really need this certain pump dispenser. And it's... You Probably know, got that, from one of our sourcing agents. Yeah. I mean, that's a good learning experience on adaptability is when shit happens. If you can't get something, you have to adapt. Even Dude, if that's you, what it's all fucking about. In business, even man. if you have to completely adapt all of your packaging, that would mean 
new labels, new boxes, new bottles, new pump dispensers, new yeah. everything. I mean, dude, you could you could do the That's something better completely than, different, not a pump dispenser. Yeah, it's better than being out of business. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so we've wrestled with a lot of that because of COVID, and um, it's it makes you tougher, man. It makes you stronger. Yeah. It really does. Those are opportunities, fellas. True, they're not problems. That's that's a, it's so corny, man. But I, I literally I literally say that to people. I, I said that to my buddy today, who's uh, he recently started a, a like a home renovation company, and he's he's doing actually real well with it. In Raleigh, yeah, cool. And um, that was my old. Thing. You know, he was he was talking about a problem he had, and I was like, is it a problem or is it an opportunity? Yeah. And dude, it's just it's. I was talking to someone else about this today too. Um, my buddy Danny. It's just all about perspective, man. It's all about how you look at it. Yeah, every. I you mean, know, you, two people can look at the same thing, and one person can it can just fucking ruin their entire day, and the other person it can just be a fucking obstacle that they fucking love to tackle. Every uh, every you know? obstacle you overcome like that makes you better. Absolutely, makes, makes you better businessman, makes you better person, makes you stronger. And you can't you can't control it. that. That's that's my whole thing about it is yeah. you can't if you run a business, you're gonna have to put out fires constantly. Like there's never not gonna be fires every single day. So with that knowledge, knowing that it's inevitable and you can't really control it. What's the point of getting upset about it? <laughs> exactly. Like exactly. I, I, I liken it to uh, people like, I don't know if you guys know people like this, but people who get really upset, when, probably not here actually because it never rains here, but like when the weather's shitty. Some yeah. people, it, it really <laughs> fucks up their day. They yeah. get really, really affected by it. Shape. It really fucks them up. This is what and I And it's just like that is the <laughs> absolute most retarded thing in the entire world to get upset about the weather because you have no fucking control over it you you can't help it you yeah, just gotta fucking just roll the punches it. man yeah exactly you know a lot of that goes to being able to live in the moment no matter what the moment is yeah. you know every just moment whatever comes your way every yep. moment can be magical if it's a shitty moment whether it's a wonderful moment if you had every moment in your life was wonderful then you wouldn't be able to appreciate any of them yeah that's true so that's true that's a hotline right there yeah um boys i would like to continue we have yeah, been going you, for a very long time. You want to shut charge. us down? I, I'll, I I'll shutting think this guys is gonna down. Be, this is going to be Alex Jones returns with me to do like four and a half hours, you know? <laughs> we can't do it, man. We can't do it. Uh, could you imagine screaming like that for four and a half hours? I, I can't even, <coughs> I, like, that dude must be on drugs. With your tinfoil hat on, man? He's literally I can't even imagine. Trip. Yeah, but I think it's a good place to switch it off. Um, I want, if you guys have anything in Anything last you want to say? I'm, I'm, I'm 100% sure I'll see you both back on here again. Yeah, we'll do it. Absolutely, again. yeah. So we had Let's a make this a regular thing. Yeah. That's fine. We could. Part 10. Whenever you want, man. Okay. Well. Do I have any parting words? I don't think so. I think uh, we, we talked about we some good shit. We had plenty of parting words. Yeah. yeah. You guys got enough. Okay. This was a great episode. Yeah. This is fucking good. Uh, Johnny Noble, thank you for coming on. Nate Schmidt, thank you. Thank uh, you I will have Sleek. I will have Sleek Inc. Sleek Inc. In the description. I will have Nate's YouTube channel in the description. Um, don't forget what, whatever body. you guys want me to put in there go for it don't forget noble body man noble body of course yeah get on my email list Nate's i have an email, email list. list if you like the, <laughs> if you like the wisdom i mean we didn't talk about anything really business related but that that's entirely business related and uh we talked about a little it's bit. it's pretty good shit if i have to say it is good shit it's I good will, shit I, I like i said i endorse it some I interesting perspective talk about business <laughs> yeah i'm so i'm so glad that we got to talk about some other shit that was talk about that was good man psychedelics and shit no psychedelics right. are way better than business thanks man yeah of course no problem all right. I hate to shut it down so quick, but that's all right. We got. That's move. all, folks. Yeah, we got to move on. <laughs> Let's get some food.